Francesco Mosco for the 2019 Euro League champions. And at WFS Istanbul fulfill their championship destiny. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Euro Air, uh, Euro League Watch Along, the Turkish Airlines Euro League Watch Along. I'm your host, Anthony Goods, representing Swiss Cultures, and we got a very, very special guest here, a Euro League snipe shooter. He's uh, he's knocked down triples all over Euro League, all over the globe. Please give a nice Euro League welcome for my man John Dealer. John, what's good, bro? How's it going, man? Thanks for having me. Man, uh, hey, it's always a pleasure to uh, it's always a pleasure to have a Euroleague vet on the uh, on, on the watch along, man. I'm uh, I'm excited for this game. We got a, we got two teams you're familiar with, you know. Uh, I, I don't know about you, but I think this one's gonna have some uh, it's gonna have some fireworks. We got Seska Moscow and uh, Anadolu Efes, man. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a great game. Absolutely, I'm excited to be uh, to be on this game. Obviously, a former team of mine. A lot of guys that I that I played against or know very well. And then you know, Cheska, one of the one of the best teams year in and year out. So this will be this will be a fun game. Yeah, for sure, man. And I think uh, I think both teams have a little something to prove now. So it's going to be very exciting. But real quick, everybody back home, if you're watching this, please. Follow along with us at Euroleague.tv. We got a promo code, watch along 10. We got the throwback promo code. That's right. 10% off Euroleague uh, TV, but that excludes those of you that live in Italy and Spain. But back to this game, we got Seska Moscow sitting in fifth place. F is sitting in 11th. This is a rematch of uh, the semifinal game of the and the 2019 championship game. You know the head-to-head -head matchup between these two teams is a uh, twenty-one and six uh, in favor of uh, of Seska. But these two these two teams met in the beginning of the season. It was round two. Seska was able to squeak out a uh, ninety-six one hundred win. It was uh, the lead was a lot. It was a lot bigger throughout that game. They were up as many as sixteen, but uh, Efes put on a little run towards the end, and Toko Shengali finished with twenty-three points. Will Clyburn added a uh, 18, and um, F had a 32 point showing from uh, Sule Micic and uh, from that game. So it'll be uh, interesting to see how they bounce back because last week they actually ended up losing to Zenit St. Petersburg. Uh, if you guys weren't here last week, you could watch that game. Uh, you could watch that watch along show on demand on the Euroleague's YouTube channel as we had Dion Thompson, the guest, as a guest. But uh, F has lost that game. Uh, 76 67 um alex poitras was was dominant with a career career high 21 points and nine rebounds and um on the other side seska returned to his winning ways beating unix and uh alexi's fed was looking like uh alexi of old last week he had a uh, 27 points so i'm uh i'm interested to see how he uh how he shows up today man because that is one man you do not want to you do not want to see catch a rhythm, especially at this point in the season, man. That guy can get going. He can get going. I remember uh, playing against him for a couple of years, and he's a guy that he's a threat every time he touches the ball. It's uh, one of those where you just got to be aware where he is at all times. And and Anthony, it's gonna be fun, man. It's gonna be a good game. Look at look at the guards we got starting. It's just gonna be a a, yeah. a good game. And like you said, they played earlier in the year in, in Ephesus with with them winning it last year and obviously meeting meeting in the past and in, in the in the Euroleague final four so it'll be fun it'll be a fun game to to watch and and these two teams obviously are led by their guards so it'll be be a good yeah. one yeah i was just thinking that man i was just thinking how like you know with the with the guard play of this game um you know being so important i'm, I'm really interested to see you know how uh, how Ephes is gonna how Ephes is gonna look this week because now they're at full strength. You know Shane didn't play last uh, last round, but uh, but Hackett Hackett's been playing well over the last month, man. Offensively, he's been uh, he's been pouring it on. He got he got Euro uh, he got the MVP 
uh, of the week, uh, two weeks in a row. And then uh, Shved, obviously, you know, he went off last week. So I think it's uh, it's going to be a very, very interesting game. It's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be close all the way down to the end. So uh, I'm excited, man. I think it's going to be really cool. Yeah, for sure. But, uh, it's just crazy, crazy now with with where they both are in the standings. I mean, usually these teams are mm-hmm. towards the top. I know it's kind of been a crazy year and last couple of years with, with COVID and everything, but to see where they are right now in the standings is kind of an unfamiliar place for for both of these teams. So it'll be a big, big game for them. Yeah, for sure, man. It, it definitely will be. But uh, everybody back home, please let us know who you guys are going for. Who are you supporting? I see we got a we got a Barca fan. Okay, that's nice. Wrong game, but you know I, I love the uh, I love the visitors. <laughs> you know we welcome everybody, and we got a we got a couple of Seska fans in there, and uh, more Barca <laughs> more Barca fans. I guess the Barca fans are. Uh, they're, they're tuned they're in. Locked in. They're tuned that. in. They're tuned in. Hey, I, I say it every week. There's always a showing of Greek fans. So, uh, you know, <laughs> it, it, it'll definitely be interesting. But um, everybody, please leave your questions for John as well. And, uh, you know, I'll for sure uh, read them out to you. Uh, Daniel Roy will get to yours in a, in a second as, uh, as we get this game going. But, John, I got to put you on the spot because that's just what I do on this show. And uh, I need to know who's winning this game. Oh man, I'm gonna. I gotta. I gotta pick my my former team, Ephes. I think uh, it's a big game for them. Like you said, they're they're finally healthy. I know they're without. I think Coach Ottoman is not there right now. But I'm gonna I'm gonna pick my former former squad. Okay, yeah, I, I'm rolling with you. I think uh, I think Ephes is gonna they're gonna pull this one out. I think uh, I think it's still gonna be very close. I think with you know both teams. You know, having a having their players. Will Clyburn's been playing well as well. I mean, man, this it's gonna be a really good game, man. I'm kind of excited for this game. I mean, and no, you, it's you interesting. Look at this, this, you, you go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, you know, it's interesting. It's just like you know, the perimeter play is obviously something that you know we're looking forward to, but it's just like the the perimeters are so different. Like F is yeah. has those small, fast guards, and then you know I, mean, I was uh, just about to say that. Like, you, look at, big... you look at their starting lineup right now, and they've got you know Voitman and Kurbanov and Malutinov, and it's like those guys are big dudes. <laughs> so mm-hmm. it'll be interesting to see how how they match up with Ephesus' three guards who are smaller than them, and then obviously you know how Ephesus matches up with them because because they're big. So it'll be. It'll be an interesting game to see who, you know, which which lineup prevails here at the start. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's the that's the beauty of EuroLeague basketball is it's about strategy. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, OK, we're going to we're going to stick to our strategy coming in, coming into this game. And then, you know, you're just going to adjust along the way. But I think this is going to be a, this is going to be an interesting battle, man. Uh, I mean, look at – I mean, even Chavette. Chavette is out. tall. Hackett is tall. Their whole starting lineup is – It's a big lineup. <laughs> huge. It's a huge lineup, man. And, like – and that's what's interesting is, like, you know, playing playing that big – I mean, you got to imagine, you know, when you have like size individuals on the court, there's going to be a lot of switching, you know. So yeah. uh, I'm interested to see how F is – is going to take take advantage of those switches. And even on the flip side, Al is going to take advantage of those switches. Are they going to try and pound it in? For sure. um, or, uh, or or what the game plan is going to be there. But, um, but yeah, no, nah, I'm, uh, I'm excited, man. I'm excited for this game. It looks like they're about to, uh, to tip off here soon. So, um, yeah, man, let's see what uh, – oh, look, I guess they got the national anthem here. How, do, how does it feel like watching uh, – watching the old EuroLeague games and old arenas you used to play in and things like that. It's pretty cool. I, I've, I try to, uh, to stay tuned in as, as much as I can um, with all of the games and, and obviously the standings. And, you know, I still talk to a lot, ton of my former teammates. So it's uh, from a personal standpoint, it's fun to, to see how everyone's doing. But uh, I love EuroLeague basketball. I think it's just a great, great basketball that's being played. And uh, to see – the the games now 
Um, obviously, it's a little easier watching him here at noon here in the United States than uh, staying up late. So, but it's good, man. I try to right. try to stay locked into these games as much as I can. Yeah, for sure, man. It's uh, and it's been a it's been such a wild season, man. I, I think every every season always has its uh his its ups and downs, but you know I think this season in particular has been uh, has been a special one. I mean, F is you know they were in playoff contention and now they're they're out. I mean they're they're in playoff contention, but they were in the playoff race. Now they're out. You know, sitting at the eleventh yeah. seed, and obviously there's still time for a lot of things to change, but it's uh. It's funny because we were talking about it last week. Ephes is not a team you want to see at the bottom heading into the playoffs. That's not a team you want to see in the AC. <laughs> because Absolutely. even if you beat them, the energy you have to expend to beat them is just going to yeah. be – it's just going to tire you out just moving forward. You know what I mean? It's, uh, it's For tough. sure. I mean, they're just – they've got veteran guys, you know, and, and I think – something that's really underrated with both of these teams and and Anthony you know how it is like every team makes changes in the offseason but for the most part you know F has kept their whole team together yeah and and that's something that can't be overlooked as the season goes on and like you said if they get into that eighth spot or seventh spot or whatever you know that the chemistry is a big thing and you know Seska has sure. routinely done a very good job of it um you know, in the past however many years. And I think a lot of that is is good for their success is they obviously make changes, but there's a core that I feel like they keep together. Yeah. And, and chemistry yeah. is huge. Chemistry is huge. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I mean, definitely keeping that core, man. That's a, you know, that's one thing that, uh, that's one thing that I thought about. Even when uh, FS started the season off, um, was it 0-5, was it? It's t board opening up with the trade t -board. ball. But, uh, what he does, man. It's what he does. <laughs> Ran off the rip, but uh, yeah, <laughs> he's a very I mean, good I think shooter. he's a very good shooter. Oh yeah, no, nah, he's he's tough, man. He's he's got the length. He's uh, obviously he can stretch you out, hack it, right on cue, hitting the uh, getting that layup, man. This is going it's gonna be some fireworks, man. I feel like the last couple of weeks, the first quarters were so slow, and then they just started catching fire. I think these two teams are just ready off rip. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, there's definitely uh, some history within the last couple of years. So, and I think, you know, mm -hmm. this with Ephes is a big, big game for them, even for Seska with, like I said, kind of where they are in the standings right now. Oh boy, man, he can get hot. There you go. <laughs> he starts, he starts hitting shots. Roddy um, and then Roddy they can score in bunches, man. That's the thing is they just, they can really, really fill it up when they get rolling. Yeah, no, nah, that's a fact, man. It's uh, there's a lot of firepower. I feel like no lead is safe in this game. You're right about that. You're right about that. I mean, that this is cool. these guys are good. This is this is going to be a high level game, and just these two teams routinely play at a high level. And man, this should be fun. Hopefully, hopefully they keep shooting this well. So that'd be nice. Yeah, nice yeah, for everyone no, watching. Definitely. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But we That's have so a, we got a question. With, with hack it, man. No, we got a question. Let's hear it. Yeah. So Daniel Roy, Daniel Roy says, uh, "How have you like working for the Hornets, and uh, do you enjoy your coworkers?" I love my coworkers. They're they're awesome to uh, <laughs> to work with. I've really really learned a lot here. It's my first year, um, first year being retired, and and working with the Hornets has been great. We've got a great staff and. And the guys that I work with are awesome. They work hard. They're fun to be around. It's been a – and, Anthony, we talked about it earlier. It's been a, been a pretty pretty good transition for me. Um, it's definitely different seeing the other side of things, coming from a player and then kind of seeing the, the other side of, from a coaching and video standpoint. So it's been a lot of fun. We've I've really enjoyed it. Season's going fast. The NBA, NBA season is a lot of games. So it's uh, it's been good. I've really enjoyed it. Yeah. Nah, that's uh that's really cool, man. Making that uh making that transition to the other side, man, and you know, starting <laughs> the uh starting the new career, man. But gotta um, start sometime. Yeah, nah, but speaking of coaches, man, both teams are uh, missing their head coaches tonight. Yeah. Um I imagine that's gonna <laughs> that's gonna have some kind of an impact on the game. How do you think that's gonna impact the game? Or do you think it's gonna impact uh, at all these two teams? You know, it's 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 obviously different. Um, but 
you know, I was fortunate enough when I played for Coach Adaman Yakup, the the coach right now for FS is is awesome, and he's, you know, he's really just a, you know, another piece of Coach Adaman. He's been with them for a long time, so he knows exactly exactly what to do, and I'm sure those guys trust him. So same with with Seska. I mean, I'm sure those guys trust their assistant coach, and you know, it's obviously weird, but I think. I think it's more about the players and, and, you know, it's going to be a good game. Yeah, not for sure, man. I think the, uh, you know, a lot of times uh, I think obviously you want to have your head coach there, but you know, in certain, with certain teams, especially veteran teams, I think that can be like a little overrated, especially for one game. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. the assistant coach is there every day. A lot of times he's coaching yeah. one of the teams during practice. Like, <laughs> you know, there's a lot Absolutely. of things to it that the uh, the casual eye might, you know, might not appreciate. But, you know, sure. I think the the main thing is, though, is it's always it's not really an issue when that assistant coach has a great relationship with the players. You know, what I mean, for sure. When if there's a rocky relationship there, then it can kind of weigh into, you know, what I'm saying the morale with the team. But, uh, you know, as long as that as long as that relationship's good, you know, I think teams are, yeah. uh, you know, Teams are and, definitely and like you fair, said, about the same. For sure. Like you said, having these two teams, veteran teams, you know, these guys, guys have been here before. I mean, they've all played together for the last year or two. So I would say that definitely helps, helps the assistant mm-hmm. coach who's coaching, you know, right now, it definitely makes things a little easier for them. Yeah. Tesca for going sure. with the switch. Tesca switching everything right now. This is going to tell you, this yeah. is, is going to be crazy. That's what we're anticipating, but uh, EuroLeague has been posting some of uh, Coach Tudis's, uh top coaching tips on social media. So let's uh, let's check that out here. Show no emotions. It's important. You face the camera, you face your opponent, you look at his eyes, and you play mind games. It's everything over here. Okay, now that you're on the other side, how do you how do you feel about it? Uh, how, how you feel about that? I like it. I mean, I think uh, you know, there's it's okay to to play with emotion, and I mean, obviously, I was a guy who did that. I'd, I'd get excited when when something good happened. You know, I'd get frustrated, but it was more of uh, that's just the competitive nature in me. But but uh, mm-hmm. you know, for hearing that, it makes sense. You know, on, on the other side, and and being here at the NBA level and seeing the quick turnaround, it's kind of one of those, like, you never get too high, you never get too low. You just kind of stay right. even keel and, and keep moving, keep moving. Uh, you're going right. to have turnovers. You're going to miss shots. You're going to have bad plays. You're going to have good plays. You're going to have great plays. But, for sure, you know, the, the transition in basketball is happening so quick that you don't really have time to, to celebrate or get mad about a certain play. Right, right. And, like, so he was speaking to, like, mind games. Do you think – were there any mind games that you remember that you used to play like with other players, even with yourself, um, you know, when you were playing? For me, honestly, I didn't, I didn't have, I didn't really do that. Um, I mean, it's from like a motivational, I was always motivated to go out and play, but uh, I mean, if, if it was someone I knew um, or someone that I was very good friends with playing against them, um, you know, I might talk a little more, uh talk a little more to him during the game i'm sure we've all done that uh but it wasn't from a mind from trying to like play mind games with him it was more of just like you know that's my guy i'm you know i'm gonna mess with him during the game see see if i can get him to take a take a bad shot or something like that i mean you know when you played you probably did that as well so and it's just cool like because you get to know you know so many of these guys in your league as you play against them and and even living in the same city. So it's, it's, it ends up, you kind of know a lot of the guys when you do play against them. So it's, it's cool. I mean, we've all done it a couple of times for sure, but um, I wasn't too Mm -hmm. big into it. Okay. Yeah, man. I think there's a, you know, uh, everybody has different personalities on the court and uh, you know, some people, some people like to play the mind game. Some people like to talk a little more. Some people, you know, they throw bowls and do it, you know, in a dirtier oh, way. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, it's uh, everything is basketball is very much a mind game. And I think that it, it's even internal, sure. like the confidence. What you tell yourself, like after you missed a few or after you made a few, like all of that is so important, man, in, in regards yeah. to 
to your success. So, um, yeah, man, it's, uh, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely important. So yeah, I like that. He, uh, I like that. He said that, are there any, uh, coaching styles in, uh, in your league that you particularly like that you've uh, enjoyed watching? Man, I've, I've been fortunate to play for some, some great coaches. Um, you know, it's just my three years in EuroLeague and then obviously played Euro cup for, for multiple years. But, uh, I mean, this, I think all the coaches, they just, it's, everyone has different tactics, different, different philosophies. Mm -hmm. And, and I just, I respect all of them. You know, there's no right way to do things. Um, right. but I've, I've seen, you know, so many different styles that it's kind of helped me, especially with my transition to what I'm doing now. But, but I've, and I, I really didn't have a bad experience. Um, like I said, some were probably a little more tough than others or had a different personality, but you know, I'm, I'm just big on like one of probably my favorites that I've played for overseas. Um, we didn't actually play EuroLeague together, but I spent three years with him. Ufuk Sarita, who's in Karsheka now, just a guy that I, you know, like I said, I was with him for th three straight years in Karsheka and then one year in Besiktas. And, you know, a guy that he's an intense guy, but gives gives his players a lot of confidence. And, and even Coach Ottoman is a guy that gave his players a lot of confidence. And, and, and I was fortunate enough to play for the great uh, Usan Ivkovic, who, uh, you know, passed away. Um, right. But I was just very fortunate to learn from him and his staff. And, you know, even in Dashka, the one year playing for Coach Ahmet and Coach Selchuk in Turkey, it's it's been great. And, you know, my first year, my first year in Greece, I played for Coach Barzokas in Olympia, who's in Olympiacos okay. now. So, man, yeah. I've, I've been around some fantastic – fantastic coaches and you know my last year uh playing last year in, in Israel we had a uh, coach Giannis and, and coach uh Franco during the year and mm -hmm. I've I've been lucky man I've had great coaches overseas and, and everyone's different that's the beauty of it you know I'm sure yeah, even yeah. looking at this game coach Atutis is different from coach Ottoman it's just it's crazy right. to see the different philosophy and different styles and different things that coaches like to do for pregame or, you know, as you know, whether mm -hmm. it's in the hotel, what do they do for walkthrough? It's just, everyone has a different philosophy and I think it's pretty cool. It's been cool to experience all those. Some, obviously I yeah. like more than others from the, you know, philosophy standpoint, but that's basketball. Right. 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 And that's, I think that's a, you know, that's just an interesting point because as, you know, especially as let's say a foreign player and, playing overseas, going to different countries, you experience so much off the court that has just never been seen before. Or that's just completely different from what you're used to. But uh, I mean, there's also a lot on the court, you know, each coach yeah. has different styles. Each country has different styles of play. And for uh, sure, you know, you really just have to adjust on the fly, you know, going from, uh, from team to team, country to country and league to league sometimes. It's, yeah, uh, definitely. Ephes is uh, yeah, a, jumped out to a nice lead here. Yeah, man, Ephes is hitting the ball. There's uh, on uh, in the comments, Batman Alessi says, uh, if Ephes keeps shooting the ball like this, they're gonna get 90 to 100 points. And uh, I definitely agree with that one. It's possible, <laughs> yeah, it's definitely. Just, I mean, look gonna... at their their team, they got, I mean, Kruno, Kruno Simone is a guy that, I mean. He's been doing this mm -hmm. for so long, but he's just such a solid piece for them, you know, with, with sure. the guards that they have and being able to to insert him to kind of be uh, a guy who can post up, who can create out of the post, play right. pick and rolls, can shoot it. I mean, he's, mm -hmm. I remember he's playing against him when he was in, he was in Kuban in Euro Cup. It was, uh, <laughs> it was a long time ago, but man, he was in Milan, played great, but he's uh, just a really big piece for them. And obviously Chris Singleton defensively and kind of how versatile mm -hmm. he is and, Help them a, a lot. Fun. Yeah, nah, for sure, great man. Ephesus is clicking right now. Ephesus is clicking, like you man. Said. Yeah, 21 <laughs> to 8. They uh, they definitely back at full strength, man. And, and it's it's crazy because last week we were watching the show. Ephesus was extremely stagnant. And they were just playing one-on-one -on -one basketball. And it was uh, – it was bad. They weren't getting the ball movement, and it, it was just—it yeah. looked like one of those games you knew in practice they were going to be yeah. moving the ball. Like, it was about For to sure. be a training camp the practice. Day. They were yep. going into a Absolutely. training camp practice. Absolutely, <laughs> Absolutely. 
I mean, that was a big shot by Hackett. Here we go. I mean, this, yeah. that's the beauty of this, though, with with these teams. And, you know, it's, it's a 10-point lead early on. But, but you know, mm-hmm. Tuska obviously can come back at any moment with the with the guys that they got. It's uh, it's tough, man. It's tough to play against a team like Ephesus when they have those guards. And you got a five-man T-board who can, who can space the floor. And it's a tough matchup because you got to, we'll, you know, in like basketball, that, you got to – got to give something up you know there's there's no defense yeah, that's going to stop everything so it's kind of pick your poison no that's a fact that's definitely a fact man especially when you got so many weapons on the floor there's no way you're going to stop yeah. everything so you brian just gotta hold somebody somebody makes a mistake and brian dunson's in yep. there joe ballin boy checked in ballin boy's been he's been playing well defensively this year he's been uh yeah He's been doing his thing, man. There you go, right on cue, Dunstan with a block. Dunstan, Dunstan is one of Dunstan the hardest block. working teammates, <laughs> one of the hardest working teammates I've ever been around. Unbelievable guy. Yeah. Unbelievable guy. Comes in every single day, does his job, doesn't complain. He is an unbelievable person and an unbelievable teammate. Just plays so hard, yeah, does so many little things for them. What uh, what did you notice? So I, I mean, he's a he's a career leader in blocks for Euroleague. What did you notice about him as a shot blocker? Like just seeing him day in and day out in practice. What did you notice about him that's different from most bigs that are even shot blockers? Yeah, you know what's crazy is is Dunstan isn't like a really tall guy. Like you know he's right. six eight. Um, but it's just I think his instincts like he's so intelligent and he times everything so well. Like his basketball instincts are just incredible. And so, and he, Mm -hmm. he does his homework. Like he, he watches video on guys. Like he knows guys tendencies. He knows what they want to do, what they don't want to do. So, you know, Mm -hmm. he's, he's got great basketball instincts, knows when to jump, you know, without fouling, which I think is a severely underrated skill to be able to to contest shots, block shots without fouling. Um, but I mean, he's one of the, him and Kyle Hines, Othello Hunter, like those guys, yeah. some of the best, best to ever do it, you know, in the Euro, at the Euro league level, just using, using their For instincts sure. and being able to, to contest and block shots at, at that level is, is incredible. Uh, definitely is. He, uh, he, he ever go get a, get a couple of your shots in practice? You of ever course, a couple did. of them on the glass. <laughs> he got a couple, but but he never blocked a three of mine, Anthony. He never blocked a three, so that's never what I would always tell him. Like, you that's all that matters. That's what you get paid to do. Didn't shoot a lot of twos. Yeah, hey. didn't shoot a lot of twos, but hey. come on out to the perimeter. You get paid you out there. This one. <laughs> that's right, oh, man. That's it was, right. It was fun, man. We had a we had a good team that year. It was a it was a fun year. My first year playing Euroleague. It was awesome to to play with those guys and you know Derek Brown. Um, Jason Granger, Thomas Huertel, those guys, Dario, Jetty, Furcon, Alex Tyus. It was a, mm-hmm. that was a great experience for me. Great experience. Um, obviously we didn't do as well as we had liked or anticipated, but, uh, right. you know, that's basketball. That's basketball. Yeah. No, that's a fact. That's a fact, man. As we, uh, coming down to 28 seconds in the first quarter, we got a score of 14 to 23. Seska Moscow is down. To the defending champs, Ephesus, uh, Ephesus is leading by nine points right now. So we got 28 seconds here in the first quarter. Um, man, I, I knew Ephesus was going to come out swinging. I didn't know they was going to be clicking like this. I mean, 23 points in the man. first quarter is uh, it's huge, man. It is, it's especially a, against, huge first you know, Seska, a very, very good defensive team. I mean, this is, mm-hmm. this is impressive. And, you know, obviously, there's your guy again, man. He's he's tough. He's so yeah. he's such a steady force for them, man. It's uh, for sure. He's so good. I mean, he can post. He can he can attack. He's a phenomenal defender. It's uh, defender. Yeah, exactly. Very, on very, top of good. That. very good. This is gonna be a good game. I know F has got the early lead, but uh, you know they're obviously right yeah. there. So yeah, I mean Hackett. You know, they got Hackett going early, and, uh, you know, Shved hit a three earlier. So, you know, Shved's on the board. And, yeah, I think it's uh, – they're all right right now. They're at home. You yeah, know, they're keeping it sure. close. It's just the first quarter, you know. But, uh, yeah, it's no reason for to sure. hit the panic button yet. 
They got to use those files uh, overseas, man. Still... Got to got to use those files. Not in the bonus yet. You got to. You can't take them home with you. You can't take them home with you in Europe. <laughs> That's right. You can't take them That's home right. with you in Europe. You got to use all of them, man. So you got uh, four seconds here. Baseline out. Be a big, big possession for them if they get a stop. Yeah, they need that. I mean, just like Ephesus uh -oh. is just hitting everything right now on the backside. Yeah. Good defense. There you go. Big stop. There goes your stop. Good defense. Good defense. Long heave. We got a score of 16 to 23. Ephesus is ahead of Seska. And that is the end of the first quarter. Everybody back home, I'd like to bring your attention to the EuroLeague Fantasy Challenge. It is the free of charge online fantasy league for EuroLeague. Gives chance, gives fans a chance to manage your own teams. You can buy players, trade players, compete against your friends, and have a chance to win prizes. Who doesn't like prizes, especially when you can play for free? So if you would like to participate, please head over to fantasychallenge.euroleague.net and uh, – if we uh, take a look at the best players from last week in regards to fantasy points, uh, Yabuselli achieved 29 fantasy points last week. Poitras, 29.7 fantasy points. Uh, Lorenzo Brown, 26. Uh, Malutinov had 30.8 points. And uh, Fall came in with uh, 30 points last week on the fantasy challenge. So be sure to... Uh, to go check that out. So, John, if you were starting a fantasy team, who you drafting <laughs> first? Who'd you first pick in your league? Oh goodness, <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I don't. I don't do those a lot. I actually did a NFL fantasy for the first time in my life this past okay. season, and that was not good. So, oh goodness, I don't know. <laughs> it's um. I mean, based off of what you just said, it sounds like the big guys did pretty well uh last week so yeah. yeah um i mean a guy like mitchich i think uh with with how he impacts the game um you know mm -hmm. here for Ephesus is a guy that i'd consider going with i mean he's gets you points assists um but like i said i'm not yeah. a huge fantasy guy so <laughs> probably the wrong guy to ask but maybe him or even you know malutinov is great um he has been you know, obviously you hope he can he can continue to stay healthy because when he's healthy he's right. such a force for for Seska. so um yeah it's it's tough man that's tough and uh, i mean yeah miritich miritich i guess can't go miritich. wrong with him. you can't go wrong with miritich you can't go wrong with miritich the, yeah for all the barca fans that are that are hopping in the chat you can't go wrong with miritich <laughs> so <laughs> can't go wrong with miritich that'll definitely keep the barca fans happy and uh we got a question yeah. here in the comments. Daniel Roy says, John, what's your favorite place that you have lived? The fa my favorite place I live? Gosh. Um, probably Tel Aviv, Israel, where I was this past season. Um, I mean, it's amazing weather right on the water. My family was there with us. Um, but man, I've, I'm, I've lived in amazing places. I've, very lucky, very mm -hmm. blessed to be able to to live where I have lived overseas. I mean, I was in Athens, Greece, my first year, Izmir, Turkey for three years, mm -hmm. Istanbul for four years, and Tel Aviv, Israel. So, like, it, there wasn't a yeah. bad spot that I lived in. I lived in amazing places. Um, obviously, Turkey, Izmir, and Istanbul are places that, you know, I love, yeah. was there for a long time. So, I was lucky. But Tel Aviv was nice just because the weather and living on the water is, is pretty awesome. Yeah, I play with uh, I play with Hopperwell. Uh, I play with Hopperwell as well. Hopperwell Tel Aviv back in the day too. Yep. So, yeah, <laughs> Tel Aviv was my favorite as well. So it's already, an amazing yeah, place. I already know for sure. Yeah, just, for sure, I mean, their yeah. fans get after it. Their fans get after it. They're pretty passionate. It's pretty awesome. Hey, it's a great, a great derby down there, man. It's a great derby. Oh in yeah. Israel. Been involved in some awesome down derbies. Down yeah, for sure. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. We got a we got a sure, close game man. now. We got a, we got a close game, man. Four points. Seska's Seska creeping back in there. 21-25. It's a uh, it's uh it's crazy to see. I remember I remember playing against. Remember playing against Will 
Clybourne. Yeah, I see that. Mm-hmm. He was in uh, – where was he at last year? Uh, he just scored. He was in uh, Zalgiris, right? Was that last year or two years ago? Gregonis? Uh, it was last year. It was last year. Last year? Yeah, he's done I really well. I think it was well. last year, yeah. 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 He's, been, he's been great for them. He's, he's good. I remember playing against Will when he was in, I think it was Ulm, Germany. I think it was when I first played against Will Clyburn and then obviously uh, played against him in Turkey when he he was with Dar Shafaka. So it's just crazy to, and, and awesome to see how well he's done over here. He's an unbelievable player. Yeah, for sure. And uh, Seska just signed uh, – <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, Seska just signed a uh, – they just had a new signing. They got a, a Larry Freeman. Uh, you know, he's coming over from, uh, from, uh, from Turkey. He's from one Turkey. of the best. Yeah, yeah. He was one of the best scorers in Euro Cup this season, uh, averaging 19.6 point, points, um, contracts for the remainder of the season. Uh, we, got a, we got a tweet here from him. says, I'm happy and excited to be a part of Seska, to have the chance to – Wear the Seska jersey and compete for one of the most historical teams is an honor. I'm ready to help the team in any way that I can. So, um, yeah, no, nah, he's uh, he, he hopefully he'll be able to, you know, step in and, and help the squad. But I imagine it's uh, it, it's tough, you know, going from a team where you know obviously you, you had a lot of freedom, you're able to shoot the ball, and you know things are running through you. And uh, and now you got to kind of, you know, figure that out. And it's funny because uh, Ife Lundberg kind of went through the same thing last year, you know, when he came, yeah. you know, in the middle of the season. Um, I felt he adjusted. He adjusted perfectly. And I'm sure Alaric Freeman will do the same as well. But, uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting to see how he gets acclimated once he's once he's there. And I don't think people really understand. OK, like switching teams is hard enough, but I can only imagine the. Uh, the playbook, <laughs> you know, the playbook at Seska, <laughs> especially at this point in the season. <laughs> I think it's going to take, sure. uh, it's going to take them a little bit. <laughs> it's going to take them. No, a little for bit. sure. I mean, and that's, that's the, the thing is, you know, I was fortunate to play. I went from playing once a week in Greece, played Euro challenge black back when they had Euro challenge. I played Euro cup. I played mm-hmm. Euro league, played champions league. And, and, you know, just not only offensively, but defensively, just the terminology that, that everyone uses when you go to a new team, it's always different. Kind of like what we talked about right. earlier with, with coaching philosophies. And, and you know, I've never went to a team in the middle of a season. Um, so I don't really know how that would be. But, our, I mean, we've all been to a new team at the beginning of the season and just learning the, the different things, getting to learn your teammates. And, and like you said, he was on a team where he was getting buckets. <laughs> I mean – he was yeah, he was killing yeah, it, yeah. and to go to a team and obviously um, you know they have the guys that are there and and to kind of fit into the system will be an adjustment I'm sure he's a great player I'm sure he'll he'll fit in just fine yeah. I'm pretty sure he played last year with uh, with Asbel um, in yeah. Euro League if I remember correctly um, so yeah you know he's he's familiar familiar with with Euro League familiar with those guys and playing against against them last year so. You know, I'm sure he'll do fine, and and he can score, and you can never have enough scoring. So I'm sure he'll he'll help Seska out tremendously. Yeah, for sure, man. It looks like Seska just pulled away to a Took one point lead. lead, and Ephes call, and Ephes has called a timeout, and uh, Seska has been rolling as uh, Clyburn <laughs> hit that last uh, hit that last floater. But let's uh, let's go to our player head to head matchup today. We have a matchup of Daniel Hackett versus Rodrigue Boubois. These are the two players we'll be following. Daniel Hackett was a round 20 in round 21 MVP. Um, it was, it's actually his first round MVP award in, in a decade, and he got him back oh, to wow. back. He's averaging seven points and uh, 1.8 rebounds, 2.4 assists per game this season. And uh, as we know, he's a he's a former EuroLeague champ with, uh, with Seska in 2019. And Rodrigue Boubois, Averaging nine points, two rebounds, two assists this season. He uh, he won the championship last year with Ephes, and uh, he has a he has a Euroleague Player of the Week MVP from uh, the 2020-2021 season. Um, so yeah, we'll see how these uh, these guys have already obviously put their put their hand in this game, but uh, you know we'll watch their progress as the uh, as the game gets goes on but going back to these comments man uh my man dennis sahin 
Uh, forgive me if I pronounce your name wrong, but he said, come on, F is from a Finner fan. All right. Oh, wow. So let's, uh, oh, wow. Yeah, that, that's what I said. Those are those are some interesting words. <laughs> you don't, you don't see that. Often. You don't hear that often now. You don't hear that often. <laughs> right. So Dennis says, who is your favorite uh, in EuroLeague and who can win the league? Who do you think will win EuroLeague this year? I hope Finner will. <laughs> I think, I mean, I, I I would love for Fenner just to get healthy. I think, uh, you know, they've kind of, mm -hmm. they've got some injuries right now. Um, they have a good team, got a good coach, and I think they've kind of gone through a lot of a lot of issues this year with, with injuries, and as, as most teams have. But I would love to, to see them at full strength and kind of get that chemistry down because I do think they're a very good team. Uh, my favorite, mm -hmm. I mean – I'd probably have to go with Barcelona. I think right now, uh, you know, they're with, with just the team that they have and, and how they're playing. And, you know, they have pretty much the same same team back. And like, like we spoke about earlier, chemistry is huge, especially come playoff time. It's huge mm -hmm. to right. everyone kind of feel comfortable in their role. Um, and again, I know, I know Ephes is, is down in the standings, but, but, but to your point, that is a team that it, it doesn't really matter what place they would be in if they're in the playoffs, that is a team that is, is a contender in my eyes. Indeed. Indeed. I mean, I, I personally, I, I've gone on record saying this is going to be Barcelona's revenge year. But uh, so I think I think Barcelona is is, is going to pull it out. But uh, man, I think Ephes, man, is probably the scariest team. Uh, yeah. Especially come playoff time with their experience, their ability to just turn up on you as they did in the first quarter. But I mean, looking at Seska at full strength, I mean, yeah, I mean they've uh, gone to how many how many Euro League Final Fours in a row? It's you can never count them out. Mm -hmm. You know, Madrid, another team with with the veterans they have, and it's 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 crazy. I mean. These these teams are so good, and and I mean the run that Seska has gone on right now is is pretty incredible. Looks like Ephes is cooling off a little bit, but uh, but no, right. I, I agree with you, man. Barcelona, Barcelona's tough, and you know they lost it last year after having a great season. There's obviously been some surprise teams that have have done really well this year and are doing well. Right. Um, there's always a surprise team that that'll catch some teams off guard and and do well. So it's been fun. Euroleague's great, man. I I love the regular season format. Uh, my first year was the the group stage. I really like the regular season format that they do mm -hmm. now. I think it's great. Right. You get to play everyone, so definitely better better than than what they had before. Yeah, no, nah, for sure. I like I like this format as well. It uh, <clears throat> you know each team gets a gets a chance to to see the others. You know what I mean during the season. For sure. And you know you got the home and the way, and then you know you creep into playoffs and. Uh, and then that takes another life of its own. So I'm uh, I'm definitely a fan of this uh, of this format as well. And looks like we got another question. What do you think about oh, Olympia Milano's shot. defense? That is a tough shot. Oh man, Milan! That's gosh, I forgot about them. That's another team. They've got a great great roster. I mean, Milan is is. They're really good with with the guys they have, the guards, you know, Malcolm Delaney, um, you know, mm -hmm. Tome, who was in Fenner for so long. Gosh, I've had to guard him way too much in the post in my time in Turkey. <laughs> Never really got any stops against him. Um, but uh, he's obviously a, gr a great player. They have a great roster. But, I mean, they're they're a great team, got a great coach. It's uh, They're another team that could can make a run. I mean, defensively, yeah. you know, they have – multiple guys who can guard multiple positions and and they're they're a dangerous team sure. because they've just they've got very very good players you know a coach who's been in the nba yeah. and is obviously one of the mm -hmm. greats overseas so that's a team that i think is a team you need to watch and probably wouldn't want to play come playoff time either yeah for sure i got them i got them going to the final four um yeah i think milan is uh they, they got a really nice squad. Is my man Hackett over there? He's filling it up, man. It's thirty four, thirty one. He uh, he keeps uh, he keeps making shots. He's definitely uh, he's definitely holding them down. But uh, real it's quick, Euro League has been looking at at the team's pace of play this season. Um, 
This graph shows the team's pace using two measurements, proportion of possessions used in transition and those used with shots under four seconds. Transition plays fall between 5% and 15% of possessions for all teams, but Zenit and Ephes, who played each other last week, represent the, uh, the extremes, trending near 15% and 30% of total possessions. So how much do you think this tells us about uh, a team? So if I'm looking at this correctly, it says Ephes plays at the fastest pace. Or is that, or am I reading uh, this backwards? 5% of transition possessions. I'll say Unix. I think maybe. Oh, okay. I see. Unix. Going right. on. Okay. Yeah. I think it's another one. I mean, you know, it's, I think there's obviously, it's, it's funny because, you know, here at, in my first year being with an NBA franchise, the analytics side is, it's crazy. It's crazy how. Mm how numbers are so involved in the game today. But I mean, no, I think, I think just in general, the game is played at a faster pace. I mean, Anthony, you know, mm -hmm. with, with all the basketball that you've played and watched um, just in this generation, it's, it's more of an up-tempo pace, but obviously depending mm -hmm. on, you know, if you, if I'm sure if you looked at the rosters of each team and you can kind of get a gauge of how teams would want to play, like, with you know, with Unix, their guards that they have, they have very fast, guards that can get out and score so yeah um yeah. And same with Ephes. you know Ephes obviously can play a slower pace or an up-tempo pace um just depending on on the lineups that they go with and you know with Seska when Malutinov is in I'm sure they probably want to slow it down and throw it inside to him but yeah, yeah. it's uh no I think it's important I, I you know whether there's a correlation between how a team does how many games they win and how fast they play I mean it's tough to tell just again, because every roster is different and, and it's, you'd have to really kind of see and gauge how, how each team plays with certain lineups. Cause you know, with efforts, if they go small, yeah, they're going to play up tempo, but if they go bigger, it might, they might slow it down a little bit. So it's, I think it's cool to see these different <laughs> types of things and to see, uh, you know, how each team plays and, and it definitely can play into it. But you know, it's just it's fun to see the the evolution of how the game is played. I guess it's a lot more small small ball now, and it's I think it's really cool. Right. Yeah, for sure. Hackett so how much how much do you, man? Hackett <laughs> Hackett's hooping right now. I mean, D Hackett is uh, he's playing like a man possessed at the moment. I think he has a I think he has like twelve points. But um, <clears throat> how much do you put into let's say analytics? versus okay and we're talking about you as a coach in the coach's seat how much do you put into analytics versus just the eye test well i think i think there needs to be a healthy balance um mm -hmm. obviously you know you don't want to over analyze anything if that makes sense um you know okay. analytics are great and here at least for us our analytics guy is awesome and it's it's kind of cool to the things that he can he can track um but you know there is a certain extent where as a coach you want to have a, a feel you got to have that feel whether it's a yep. flow within the game or you know there's there's a healthy balance but i do think it's beneficial um even from like a player development standpoint because you can uh you can work with a player and tell them like hey like you know whether it's shooting or you know, coming off a certain pick and roll or going to your left, going to your right, working on different finishes in the within the paint, you know, whether it's a Euro, whether it's a floater off your right, left foot, you know, right. being able to visualize and give that guy a number and say, hey, this is what you shoot when doing this and this is how you shoot doing something else because they can kind of trigger their mind and tell them like, hey, maybe I need to work on this a little more in the offense. Right. Or just from a team standpoint, you know, some of the things that we've done and charted have helped our guys. You know, it's like, hey, mm -hmm. you know, when we shoot in a transition or, you know, contested, whether it's a contested three or, you know, a shot within, you know, the first six seconds of the shot clock. But also at the same time, yeah. you know, you have to take into consideration what the play was or if it was off a turnover, if it was right. like a one on two, a three on zero. Like, you know, there's there's certain things that go into it. So I'm I'm all about it. And especially with kind of my position here, we're we're big into like getting those types of analytics for the coaches or players. But, you know, you do have to have a feel, and it's not just about the numbers. I think some guys maybe tend to 
go by the number. Well, the numbers say this, but but you know, Anthony, you got to have mm-hmm. a feel within the game, um, for sure. And you can't. So it's there's there's a hef- healthy balance, but it is pretty cool to see some of the things that that different teams right. chart. Yeah, not for sure. At the end of the day, you got to put the ball in the basket, man. At the end of the day, absolutely. Whether you get there by science or whether you get there by feel, you got to put the ball <laughs> in the basket. You know, you're right about that. That's simple, man. <laughs> It's that simple, but uh, you were right about Luton that. Off, he was take the, the lead uh, again. Yeah, they did. And uh, Nikola Milutinov was the MVP of round 23 with 17 points. Uh, the game against Unix, he achieved 17 points, seven rebounds, two assists. But uh, we got a little TikTok video from Seska starring uh, Milutinov. And uh, we're going we're gonna to check that out here. As we uh, as we see one of his highlights with some nice graphics, he's uh, he's seventh in rebounding, six point two per game this season, and uh, ranked seven all time on in Euroleague with uh, five hundred three offensive rebounds. So, um, wow, you know it's really good to see him coming back. You know, especially from injury, you know, early in the season, and uh, you know having such a great year. So, uh, you know, shouts out to him. But we got a uh, thirty seconds left. F is up forty four forty one. Let's see who's gonna who's gonna take this lead into halftime or something's gonna Seth's gonna Good ball at least movement. tie it up. Great Good ball, ball movement. movement, great shot. Bucket. Bucket. We're all tied up, ladies and gentlemen. 44-44. 19.6 seconds left. All right, what you drawing up? You coaching Ephesus right now. What you drawing up? Heading down the court right now. 19 uh, seconds. What are they what are they checking? Are they checking the clock? I mean, I would probably put Shane back yeah, in, probably. and knowing knowing that Seska has been switching everything, I'd probably just you know put my shooters in, get a little pick and roll ISO for Shane, see if he can either create a shot for himself or or one of the guys. I mean, I'm yeah. digging into uh, gotta let your players be players, man. Let your playmakers make plays and uh, don't overthink yeah. it. So he's, I mean, Shane's been great the first half. Um, so I'd I'd you know whether it's him, Mitchich, whoever. Whoever's kind of got it going yeah. right now, just maybe maybe get them in a pick and roll seat, assuming that Sesu's going to switch because that's kind of what they've been doing. Put your shooters in and space them out a little bit. Yeah, it looks it's like, like, uh, it looks like they took that bucket off. It was a shot clock. Oh, wow. I was wondering what yeah, they were he, doing there. It was in his hands. Yeah, it was in his hands. So they took that bucket off. So it's a three-point lead for Ephesus. As they have the ball with a uh, 19.6 seconds left. Let's see if uh, see that. I mean, I put Shane in too. I mean, Shane just hit two in a row not too long ago. Yeah. So I definitely, uh, you know, let him groove and let him get this last shot off. You know, just so he has some good try and carry that momentum into the second half. Because if he hits this one, like you know, and he hits three in a row, you know, that'll be that'll be huge for the team. So I, I'm real. I'm real big into playing into players' rhythm. You know what I'm saying? For sure. You know, getting them going, especially guys that can fill it up like that. Like, okay, he's hit two. Let's give him a couple more looks, even if he misses. Absolutely. Back, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's how big nights for sure. happen. I mean, yeah, you're right about that. When those guys, there's a lot of guys on that team that that when they get rolling, it's hard to uh, to stop them. So, yeah, he's been been playing right. great. Maybe see get him in a situation to to get downhill on one of the one of the bigger guys. I mean, it'll be interesting to see what Seska does defensively if they get, you know, Malutinov out or keep him in. Um this is where the the tactics come in, man. This will be this will be fun to see. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. I think uh looks like uh yeah, it looks like Shane's coming back in. He he's right there in the huddle, so yeah, they definitely okay. uh, I wonder if Seska has any fouls to give or not. Yeah, that would be a great they have a foul question. to give. We know we know they're gonna use it. We know they're gonna use it. Like you said, you can't take yeah, them with you. For sure. For sure. You can't take them can't take them with you. And uh everybody back home, I see all these comments. We're gonna get to them at the uh in the second half. If you guys hang around with us as we uh, we're about to head into halftime here. And um uh, you know, we want to just catch these last 19 seconds. These are great questions that are coming in, though. We'll surely get to them. There's the foul. Yeah. So they definitely had one to give. 
Yeah, I think you gotta let you gotta give Shane space, man. Let him create. That's what he does. That's yep. what he does. And last week, that's how Ephesus was playing. They're playing really spread, and like Michich, he kept going one on one, but it's just like he got tired. You know, he was just yeah. grinding and grinding and trying to drive and trying to kick. And it was just a lot. But it's like when you got guys that can kind of take the pressure off, and then obviously you gotta hug Michich. You know, you gotta hug Shane. Yeah. You gotta hug Roddy. You know what I mean? It's uh. Here they it's go. There's tough. the switch. Oh, they went back. Went to Mitchell. Yeah. Okay. Oh, good pass. Oh, he missed it. <laughs> Come on, keyboard. Oh, dang. Missed it right at the buzzer. So, we got good, 44. Good read. 44, 41. That is a good read, man. It's funny. The whole world know Mitchell's is going right, but nobody stops him. <laughs> it's like you see it you see it time after time year after year the whole world knows he's going right but at the end of the day stop it <laughs> yeah exactly, Find a way. exactly. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah we got a score of 44 to 41 man who's your mvp of that first half i mean probably shane larkin or hackett i know the seska's loser hackett, right now yeah. but they've just those two been playing at a at a high level i mean it's We've got a good one. We yeah. we were right about this, man. It's a good game so far. So hopefully, uh, hopefully it keeps going. Yeah, no, for sure. Definitely it's high definitely, scoring. Uh, high scoring. High scoring for sure. Hackett got twelve at the half. Shane got nineteen. Um, it's a it's a game. I think Will got ten points. It's a it's definitely a game, man. But we, here we are at halftime. So let's take a quick break and check out what else is going on around Euro League. You're invited to celebrate the One Team Games by participating in the One Team Walking Challenge. Select your team and help us achieve 10,000 steps over four days as one team. Hi guys, the time is now. Join us in the One Team Walking Challenge to support the One Team program. Ethan Lundberg, point guard, Seska Moskov. Beautiful stuff from the Dane. I'm a player that uh, always brings a lot of energy. Hard nose drive by Lundberg. A very hungry player. Lundberg free for the three pinpoint precision. I always want to get better, I always want to learn. And um, I'm just out there trying to have fun and trying to win, you know, ultimately a competitor. Ifi Landberg has enjoyed a meteoric rise in the Turkish Airlines Euro League. Having joined eight-time champion Seska Moscow midway through last season, the Danish point guard played a key role in the push for the postseason. And having progressed to the final four, the intensity increased even further. For a player coming in the middle of the season or close towards to the end of the season, and having zero experience in Euro League and in, in this kind of competition. He had a very quick adjustment. And that's the first indication that I said to the coaches and uh, to other players, because from the first practices, the first, uh, literally from the first two, three practices that we, we were running, uh, every teammate liked to play with him. He joined us last season, and he hit the ground running. He hit the ground like he belonged. He showed everyone in the EuroLeague that he belonged. And obviously he's doing the same this year. He belongs here and he's already proved that. I think I've played six or seven months in the EuroLeague, so I haven't even had one full season under my belt yet. So I'm just taking each day by day, taking as much experience as I can and uh, trying to learn and get better. Lundberg is a guy who can rank the points up. Lundberg rises and he drills the three. 
what everyone really dreams of or, or wishes for. You know, playing for a club of this magnitude, it's definitely something special. Obviously, it's a huge responsibility and there's a lot of pressure because they always compete for championships. And you have to have that mindset if you want to succeed in this league, if you want to be able to play at this level, you always got to have championship aspirations. This is a great club with great people around. All the guys are, all the specialists are, are taking care of him. And uh, I believe now the story begins. We would like to go back to the final four and then we'll see what happens. But ultimately everyone's goal is to, to at the end of the season hold the trophy. a nice feature there on Ife Lundberg, man. And as we mentioned earlier, you know, he came halfway, uh, he came halfway through the, um, through the season. And uh, it's always tough adjusting like that. And I know you say you never, you never changed in the, uh, in the middle of the season, but I think that, you know, and I'm sure you've had guys come in the middle of seasons on, you know, on some of your teams. And I just think for that individual, you know, it's, it's tough, like adjusting, as we were talking about earlier too, just adjusting to everything being different, especially if you're coming from another country, you know, getting used to the style of play, the coaching, the, sure. the terminology, um, the players, just just trying to learn everything on the fly because it's like you want to go and play well. You know what I mean? You want to – there's that pressure too. That's that pressure to perform. For like, sure. okay, we just got this guy. We're going to throw him in here. Like, and you kind of – try to hit the ground running but you know you gotta stay you gotta stay cool while doing it man so it's a it's definitely no easy task no it, it certainly takes a certain mental toughness to kind of uh you know go into a team or yeah go into a team halfway through the year and, and like you said you, you want to do well because they bring you in for a reason and and obviously you know if if it doesn't work out, they have you'll you'll get sent home, and that's that's the reality, and that's the business side of it overseas. And uh, mm -hmm. you know you want to do well, you want to make an impact on the team to help them win because they brought you in for a reason to help the team. So there's a lot of pressure, um, but again, you just have to be confident, have a, a good mental toughness to you, and and knowing that you know you're here to help, and they brought you in for a reason, and and you're good enough to help the team win. Yeah, for sure. One thing I used to hate when a uh, when a player came halfway through the season is you knew it was about to be thirty minutes of five on zero. You just like yo. <laughs> that's when that's when get, you get the young guys. That's when you get the young boys. That's when you get the young boys. Start getting that knee soreness. Like my back, <laughs> my back a little stiff today, coach. Get this one out. No, you got to have the young guys. See, see, we don't we don't usually sub out during the five on five portion, but when it's five on zero, you tell the young yeah. guys, you can sub me out this time. Yeah, sure. go get, go get some young fella. There we go. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, no, every every team has their young guys, so it's it's awesome. It's been cool to see see the the development of some of the young guys that that I've played with, and mm -hmm. and even now, you know them with with how they're developing in their careers. It's awesome. Those guys work hard, man. They work hard. Yeah, for sure, man. Uh, let's get to a couple of these questions here on uh, on YouTube. Haberin Olsen said, uh, why do you think Fenerbahce and Ephes are falling? I guess he's referring to the standings. I think I think for Fener, I think it's just, you know, the and Ephes, honestly, the, the inconsistency yeah. consistency in the lineups. You know, it, it's been hard mm -hmm. for – for them to get a rhythm because they've just had so many guys in and out of the lineup. And I know Fenner has got DeColo. I think DeColo's still out and I'm not sure if Vesely is back or not, but you know, it's, it's hard. I know, uh, you know, a lot of those guys were on the team last year for both teams and, and especially Fenner with a new coach, um, you know, learning his system. It, it's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen in a month, um, you know, going through a coaching right. change and, and bringing in new guys and, and having guys that were injured and in inserting them back into the lineup, it's it's tough. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, so. I, I would just I would love to see you know, especially from Fenner's standpoint, um, them to get healthy and and play, you know, multiple games with a full roster and having guys you know in shape and, and in their rhythm and 
because I do think they have a good team. And like I said earlier, they have a great coach. And, and Ephes, you know, with their experience in last year, how well they did. And, you know, maybe that had something to do with it with Ephes. You know, you, you just won the Euro League and you know you have everyone back and you know what you're capable of. Yeah. So um, there's always – there could have been that little letdown. But but it'll be – I think just the main thing is the inconsistency with with guys in and out of the lineup. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's definitely been the tale, you know, for both teams. And, uh, you know, you look at Fender being without DeColo and Vesely and, uh, you know, the same guy that asked that question here on uh, on YouTube, you know, he says, you know, what do you expect from uh, Fenner when DeColo and Vesely come back? And I think they'll be, you know, they'll be back, you know, to full strength. And I think they'll actually be a little better. And I think that's where I see the promise in Barcelona as well. Like when Calathis was out, you know, Calathis and Higgins were out at a, at one point, you know, that they gave, you know, the Pro Vitola and Yoko Baitis, you know, a chance to kind of learn and, and shine and play some important games. And I think, you know, the same thing is happening uh, over in Fenner. You know, you got to have, I mean, DeColo, he makes a lot of decisions for that team, you know, for in sure. regards to, you know, not, not just scoring, but passing and everything else. So now that gives, it gives a lot more pick and roll reps for, you know, the other guards on that team. And I think that, yeah. you know, that's that's key for their development, especially when you're trying to make a late playoff run. And now you get those players back. Um, it could potentially could potentially be a blessing in disguise. So, I mean, for it's sure. only, only time will tell. But, uh, you know, I think yeah. that Finner would definitely benefit from having both of those guys back and hopefully they get them back in the lineup soon. Yeah, I hope so cuz yeah, I mean, you're talking about guys that are some of the best at their position in Europe and have been for the last yeah. however many years. So, and even going back to to Nick and Corey being out, I mean, those are two key pieces to to what Barcelona does, but you know, the the other guys getting reps is is going to help just cuz like you said, they're getting experience, you know. They're it's allowing your backup point guard and to get a lot of reps in game. And you never know what can happen, you know, later on in the year. And it is a long season. So any reps that they can get are game reps against other EuroLeague teams is only going to help. Right. And uh, and going back to, you know, Finner and Ephes, uh, I mean, you're familiar with both teams having played uh, many years in, uh, in, in Turkey. What's that Turkey basketball culture like? It's great. It's, uh, you know, I was fortunate enough when, when I was, when I was there playing, I mean, Gosh, it was probably the best the league has been in a long time. I mean, you had at one point, we had four EuroLeague teams. And uh, when I was in Gala, it was Efes, Fener, Darshafaka, and Galatasaray all playing EuroLeague. And mm-hmm. then you had your Euro Cup teams. Um, but just from top to bottom, it was it was a tough league. I mean, there were no easy games, especially, you know, going from a EuroLeague game on a Thursday or a Friday. And then going to play in the Turkish league, um, you know, you have a team with with uh, five foreigners who've been waiting all week to play you. Um, it's tough. Mm-hmm. It's not easy. And and I think, yeah. uh, you know, at the time when I was there, I mean, just look at the the level of teams. You know, Fenner was one of the best teams in Europe. And, you know, Ephes was doing well. well and, you know, Dar Shafaka won Euro Cup and then was playing Euro League the next year. And, and the year then when Coach Blatt was there, they were very good. You know, you had guys like Will Clyburn and Brad Wanamaker on the team. I mean, it was just – it was an elite league. And, and it was it was fun to uh, to play there. And, I mean, look at Corey Higgins. I played against him when he was in Turkey in Gaziantep. And mm-hmm. to see, you know, him to go from Gaziantep to, to Seska was – and now he's in Barcelona. It's just – it's cool to see the development and to see the guys who – I've played against in Turkey and have gone on to have awesome careers in EuroLeague. It was it was an elite league. It was a lot of fun. There was no easy games. It uh, made for an entertaining yeah. year, that's for sure. Right. How was the Derby? Oh, the I Derby was crazy. Yeah, the Turkish Derby. Yeah. It's uh, it's funny because I've played on so many different teams in Turkey, so I've I've experienced quite a few derbies. Uh, okay. <laughs> I mean, whether it's Ephes and Fenner, Gala and Fenner, Besiktas and Gala, you know, like Karsheka yeah. and Galatasaray. It's, it's, it's crazy. I've been a part of many different ones. Been on both sides of them, mind you, for some of those some of those derbies. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, the fans are very passionate. 
you know, they love their sports, whether it's, you know, football or but when I say football, sorry, I mean soccer yeah, yeah. I don't know, for all the people, the European people uh, watching. It's Euro League, man. We, we in Europe. We can yeah. use football right now. You know? <laughs> so, uh, but no, whether it's that or, you know, just their basketball, they they love their, their clubs. Um, I've been fortunate enough to be a part of some very passionate organizations and we've had great fan support. So um, it's been awesome. They, they love their sports. I, they give us a lot of energy on the court, so we we greatly appreciate it. Yeah, for sure. I think the uh, you know the cool part about uh, the derbies is obviously what goes on in the game, but I love everything leading up to the game as well. It's like you know that week of practice prior to that game, or however long you have prior to that game. You know, it's it's intense. You start seeing the banners and stuff going on around the city or your neighborhood, depending on how close you live to the gym. It's uh, it's really cool to kind of see the city uh, get behind their team during those during those For games. Sure. It definitely when it's a derby game, it's it's elevated to another level, man. It's uh, <laughs> they don't mess around with the derby games. Nah, not at all, man. Not at all. And it looks oh, like our, great uh, our second half is getting ready to. Second half is underway. Early on. No, this is – these guys are good, man. It's uh, – that was a great pass. Great – that's it, man. He's yeah. he's such an underrated passer, Shved is. It's crazy because obviously he can, sure. shoot, he can score. And I know I know he, I mean, routinely is up there and assists for EuroLeague, especially when he mm-hmm. was in Kimki. But, man, he's so talented right. just with his height and his ability to, to see the floor. It's uh, – he's really good. Uh, we got an injury. Yeah, yeah. It looks like Joe Ballin Boy hurt his hand. Oh, like he might have jammed it. Look like something dislocated. Uh, Ooh, they about to pop that joint back in. You ever had a dislocated finger? I have. I have. It's uh, not fun. I'm, I've had. I've had two <laughs> finger surgeries. One when I was actually in Ephesus. Um, oh, no, wow. it's uh, yeah. I broke my other finger in the basketball tournament. So. Mm. It was, yeah. I've had a couple finger surgeries. Cruno, not fun man, this is, at uh, all. Seska is so active on defense, man. It's crazy how you yeah, see they when they when they get an advantage in the post, whether they come, whether they trap from the top baseline. It's just you know, we've, I've played on teams where we always trap baseline or we always trap from the top. They're just very active, right? Right. No, I mean, I think it's, I think you have to be, yeah, you have to be, man, especially playing against bigs, because it's like, usually when that trap's coming, it's coming from a guard, you got to be active, because they're, they're, if they're a decent passing big, you know, they already got the height advantage, and, you know, you gotta, you gotta let them feel some kind of pressure somehow, so. For sure. uh, You definitely, definitely got to come with some, uh, some activity there, but what do you think is the, uh, what do you think is the game plan here for uh, for both teams heading into the second half? I mean, for Seska, I think it's just, you know, trying to contest, make it as difficult as you can when you play a team like Ephes with the guards that they have. It's hard to say mm-hmm. you got to stop them because, I mean, you know, if you're a very right. good offensive player, you're not really going to stop somebody. But just making it right. difficult, kind of maybe trying to wear these guys out, make them tired. You see – Seska has been picking up full court a lot, whether it's with Hackett, who just hit another mm-hmm. another three. Um, sure picking up full court, you know, make making these guys work. You gotta you gotta make Mitchich and, and Larkin and you know Bobois work when they get the ball in bounds and and hopefully keep some pressure on them. But I mean Seska's very active defensively right now, man. Just got active hands and they they've got yeah. great defenders, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know that you got <laughs> um with with Daniel and and uh, Clyburn and and those guys, I mean, they get after it on defense. And even you got Malutinov in the paint and Kurbanov's a very yeah. versatile defender. I mean, for sure, I can guard Kurbanov will get out there and sit down five. with you. <laughs> one right. through five, he so, gonna get out there and sit know, down with you. <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, obviously, they're that's what's got them the lead right now. You know, is their defenses are yeah. getting getting deflections? They're they're trapping the post. They're rotating and getting out and running, and 
you know, for, for your efforts, you definitely gotta gotta take care of the ball a little more, and and hopefully they can they can get back to making shots like they were in the first quarter. But but you gotta tip your hat to Seska, man. They're they're playing hard right now. They're playing hard. They're getting after it. Right. Yeah, they they definitely are, man. And uh, Ephesus, is, you know, they now they had eight they had eight turnovers in the first half, and uh, you know now they're up to ten. Uh, so they definitely need to do a better job, you know, taking care of the ball because Seska's converting those and turning those into buckets on the other end. So they need to. That timeout was uh was well needed. A timely timeout there. Good, we got a good, forty-eight good forty-four out. lead. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta get. At what point though do you like? Because sometimes coaches just kind of let you ride it out. You know what I mean? One turnover, two turnover, and that some players are kind of looking to the sideline, like, are we still going or not? You know what I mean? <laughs> at, at what point? At what what situations do you think is it necessary to let your players play through turnovers? For sure, I think uh, again, it's kind of a feel thing. I think with with. Uh, mm -hmm depending on the team you have or the lineup you have in, I mean, with, with Ephes in, in their, you know, both these teams really, like you've got veteran teams, guys who've, yeah. who've been there before and, and you'll have a feel of the game. Like, okay, we just turned it over three times in a row, you know, Jessica's applying pressure. Maybe we just settle the guys down. But, but as a coach, I think just, just you trust your guys, you know, they're, like I said, they're a veteran group. You know, if, if you're right. if you want to get shame back in or whatever, whatever you think you need to do, but you gotta you've got the Euroleague MVP on your team, so you gotta trust him and, and you know, be confident in him making the right decision. But it's right. uh you know, there's definitely if, if you feel like they're really making a run and you know, Seska was and it's a good timeout. You know, I don't think there's a right. there's a right or wrong answer. It's all about feel and, mm -hmm. and like I said you know, depending on who's in the game, you know, you trust your guys, you got a veteran team. If you got a young team out there, yeah, you might, you know, if you have guys, you know, I was on a team in Darshvaka where we only had a couple guys who had ever played EuroLeague before. And, uh, okay. you know, we're on the road at Seska and if a couple things happen, yeah, we need, we need to calm the troops down a little bit, call right. a timeout. But, uh, but no, I think, I think that was a smart timeout and, and we'll see right. if, uh, if this can get a bucket. I don't know if have they, they haven't scored yet in the third quarter. So, no, nah, they haven't scored in the third quarter yet. And, uh, you know, they just had another turnover, uh, the last possession down. So, but it's just, I mean, yeah, even, it, even with, with Seska, when, when they have, when Ephesus is trying to ISO with how they get in the gaps and kind of really make it crowded, it's tough to score in Europe, mm -hmm. man. I know that's the old, that's the, the million dollar question that uh, you get a lot of European guys who play in the NBA. Is it harder to score in Europe <laughs> or in the NBA? Right, right. It's tough, man. It's definitely tough, man. And this Hackett's got 20 points here. He's hit four threes. Um, he's he's having a he's having an amazing game, man. And Seska's Seska's been they've been rotating, they've been out, they've been running, and even on the even on the transition, whether it's transition or delayed break, man, they've just been moving the ball just quickly, like yeah. Hackett came down, dropped it off the Clyburn, vacated to the other yep. corner. You know, they swung it to Sved. Sved drove it middle, hit Hackett in the corner like that. Like, they're just playing unselfish basketball and moving it. And I see F is it's kind of going back to what they did last week. And it's been, you know, a lot of one-on-one -on -one playing off of the switches. And, um, yeah, you know, they haven't, haven't had as much movement. And we get another turnover just like that. Wow. Don't let him. Three ball, <laughs> fifty six forty four, man. Seska wow. is Seska is running away with this one right now, man. Ephes is uh, continuing to struggle right now, uh, man. This is a uh, it's a great defensive performance right moment. now. Yeah, I mean they're they're playing great defense, like you said. They're just really active, really active, playing hard, and and you know when they have a if one of the guards are trying to ISO one of the big guys on the perimeter, they got everyone in the lane crowding it, making it difficult. It's uh, it's impressive with how they're playing right now. And like you said, they're sharing yeah, the ball. Sure. Another one. Golly. Man, D Hack is killing. Okay, D Hack is. He might, get a, he might get another MVP, man. He might be well on his way. He might. He, he, 
he on his way, man. He is uh he is hooping, man. So D Hack is a great pass well. by Valentinov, by the way. Because he easily could have shot yeah. the offensive rebound. That's just an unselfish play. For sure, for sure. Get it to the hot hand, you know. First Malusinov and it was fed the uh the couple of possessions ago and finding Hackett. But uh speaking of Fed, man, he's only ten points away from uh scoring three thousand points. Um you know, that's a that's a lot of points in Euro League history. I mean, he's coming off of uh, 27 points last week, you know, against Unix, and uh, he holds the sing- single season records with 740 points and 107 wow. three pointers made. Both of those were set in 2017 uh, 2018 season. And uh, he's seven all time with uh, 459 three pointers made for his career. So he's 10th all time in scoring. Um, I-, I anticipate he'll probably. He could possibly get to that uh that three thousand mark here in this game, man. He's only he's only a few jumpers away, man. <laughs> only a he's couple. Only a he can. Jumpers. He's one that can fill it up quick. He's uh, I mean, he's an unbelievable talent, man. He's obviously played in the NBA and has had an unbelievable career overseas. Um, he's just so skilled. Can really shoot it. Can pass. Mm-hmm. He's got great size for a guard. Um, and he yeah. just fits in perfect for what for what Seska does and. You know, obviously he was in Kim Key for most of the time and, and was playing great with them. So it's uh I mean it's well deserved because he's really good. He's very good. Yeah. No, nah, for sure, man. And I think it's just it's just really cool seeing these players, you know, reach these uh reach these milestones. And uh, you know, I think that, you know, it really speaks to, you know, not just that, okay, I played in EuroLeague and I was a good player, but like, you know, to score 3,000 points, man, that is, that's a heck of a career. And there's so many great players that have never, have never gotten anywhere near that. But, you know what I'm saying? And not to, sure. not to shy away from them greatness, but it's just to, you know, to speak to, you know, what Alexi is, you know, surely to accomplish hopefully this season um, or maybe yeah. even in this game. Um, yeah. And it's, it's, it's quite a feat, man. It's really cool. Absolutely. Feet. Absolutely. Man, Bobo is so yeah. good at coming off those pin downs. Yes. So going back to going back to you, you know, now you uh you're working with the Charlotte Hornets, you know, you're doing a player development. Um, how easy was that transition and what advice would you uh would you give to other players wanting to transition into this particular field? Yeah, it, it it wasn't easy. I think, uh, you know, I, I was ready to be done. So that helped with the transition. I was, I was ready to be done playing and just ready for that next, um, that next chapter, you know? Um, but, mm-hmm. you know, I, coming here, I didn't know anyone in Charlotte um, within the organization and it was kind of crazy how okay. this opportunity came about, but uh, you know, I'm excited and I was excited to get here and start. I'd known, you know, I'd always wanted to get into coaching when I was done playing. Um, you know, my coaching's kind of in my family. My father was a high school coach for over 40 years. My mm-hmm. One of my brothers is an assistant coach at Ohio State right now. So, and my oldest brother was a high school coach. So it's something that I've always wanted to do. Um, but, you know, coming here and, and doing some of the video work, the on-court stuff comes natural to you. I think as a player, that's, yeah. that's kind of your comfort zone. But coming here and, and <laughs> learning how to clip video and, and do all those things that was like completely new for me and i had no mm-hmm. idea how to do it like i had zero background <laughs> on how to clip a scout game zero and we had talked about it right. man. like as a player you just see the final product so i'm like okay like i'm coming in right, at the right. most beginning level that you can come in at and i told the guys that i work with they're great and i'm like because they ask you like you know what what background do you have with this and i was like man i have no idea what you're talking about so it, it's crazy mm-hmm. to see how much I've, I've picked up in the short amount of time, but it's cool. You just, you get to, you learn a lot about the league. Um, you know, I'm scouting, doing different scout games every night for another team uh, to watch different players and, and to pick up different things from what teams are doing. It, it really kind of opens your, your view of coaching and kind of gives you a different view of what teams are doing. So it, it's been great. Um, but for guys getting into it, man, I think, uh, you just have to be open to try different things. I think in our mind, you know, we, we spoke about it earlier. You kind of have in your mind what, like, all right, this is what I'm going to do. And you maybe think it will come easy, 
Um, or you're like, yeah, I, right. I did this in my career. You know, it's going to, I'll have plenty of opportunity, but I think just being proactive when you're done. And if there's something that you really want to do, whether it's getting into coaching or in real estate or finance, whatever it is, and just, you know, being proactive and in, in doing that and reaching out to people because, you know, we are overseas for 10 months out of the year and coming back yeah. home can be an adjustment being in America, um, for, for the, for year round is always an adjustment, but, uh, you know, for me, I've, I've loved every second of it. It's a lot of work. It's fun. I get to, uh, get to be on the court every day and play, you know, quite a bit still. So that, uh, that definitely scratches the itch of me, uh, being retired now, but it, it's fun, man. It's fun to, to see the best players in the world on a daily basis and to still follow EuroLeague and things that are happening in Europe has been great. Yeah, no, nah, for sure, man. That's, a uh, that's really cool, man. And they, uh, we got a 10, okay. Back down to seven. We got a seven point lead or no, 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 13. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was Seska. That yeah, I'm tripping. Just hit a sorry, three. We got a 13 point, lead. 13 point lead for Seska. F is, uh, F is at 49. Seska at 62 with about three minutes left in this game. Looks like F is moving the ball a little better now, though. So we'll see if they can get uh, yeah. get some points on the board. Big, but uh, we, got, we got a comment from uh, from Ender. He says, can F is come back? I believe it's still early. It's 10 points, three minutes still left early. in the third. Still early. For sure they could come back. You know, they got a. They got enough scores. They got enough talent to do it, man. They just it just comes down That's to stops, sure. you know. It just comes down to stops. And Ephes hasn't been they haven't been great with uh defensively this year. They've been they've been giving up uh I think uh nearly eighty points, you know, per game. So they uh they definitely gotta get stops to uh to turn this around, but uh, Brian Dunstan is a uh, he's getting closer to a getting closer to a milestone. He's at a 290 blocks right now. That's um, unbelievable. He's at 280. He was at 288 heading into this season. Um, as we know, he's the all-time leader in blocks in uh, Euroleague history, and uh, he's just tacking it on, man. He's just pouring it on. <laughs> so, I need to ask him how many of those he thinks are against me. <laughs> from when, no, from when we sure. played against wonder, each other, if he blocked me any times. That's funny, man. I, I wonder uh, I wonder if he, like, you know, as a shot blocker, I wonder if there's just certain players or certain teams that he plays against that he just knows, like, okay. Because, like, you know, sometimes you'd be playing against a team and you're like, okay, they always help off the strong side corner. I'm about to get a lot of threes sure. this game. Or they play zone. I'm gonna get a lot of threes this game. <laughs> I wonder if there's a team for him where he's just like, "Yo, I know I'm I'm getting four blocks tonight. Or I'm gonna have the opportunity." <laughs> I'm sure there is because of I'm whatever sure there is. I feel like right. Yeah, I feel as players we always do that. I mean, I knew, I knew. I was like, "Man, I'm gonna get a lot of looks this game." They play zone, like you said. Are they really help in <laughs> on pick and rolls? That corner guy, he's in the middle of the paint. Yeah, I'm I'm in the corner right, every right. time. So it's uh. No, we're definitely aware of those things. I'm sure he does. I'm sure that'd be a cool question to ask him. I'm sure he's aware of like, yeah, you know what? I think this is a, this is a potential four, four block game for me today. You know, four or five blocks right. today. That's incredible though, man. 288 blocks. That's unbelievable. That is yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, no, that's 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 wild, man. That's a that's a wild stat. And uh, and the crazy thing is, is it's just. It's just gonna continue on until yeah. until he hangs it up. Until he comes on this side. Yeah. Until he comes on this side of basketball. <laughs> it's gonna. Then you're, then you're gonna, gonna have him on here. On. Yeah, for sure. Then you're gonna have him on here, man. <laughs> for sure, man. He's, we gonna have to it should be easy for him ASAP. though. You know he's gonna get an Ephes game. You know he's gonna get an Ephes game because that's the the only team he oh, played for. Sure. Oh, he played for Olympiacos. He played for Olympiacos. So I apologize, okay. but. Most of his career was with Ephes, so any of the Ephes sure. games when he's when he hangs them up, whenever that is, he can come on here. <laughs> nah, man, and Ephes is uh, creeping back. They got it down to nine. Got a nine point lead here. I mean, I think it's important, man. To get, if you can get it down, keep it down to single digits heading into the fourth. You know, it's just a little sign of hope. Um, For sure. So they got to get stops. Looks like they're, and they're going picking it up a little defensively picking it up a little bit yeah. defensively, which, you know, they, 
scoring points for FS usually isn't an issue. So they can uh, mm-hmm. they can score score points in in bunches and quick. So it'll be interesting to see if they can string a couple stops here before before the third quarter's over. They got yeah, one of them, but sure. they can get a get a bucket here and another stop. It's yeah, FS can always come back. Both these teams can, man. They're just they're so experienced, yeah. and it's hard it's hard to rattle these teams. Hard to rattle these guys because they've been there before. They've they've done this, you know, for so long. Right. So that's a great let's read. See, uh, let's check back into our player head to head matchup. See how these two uh, these two fellas are doing. Obviously, Daniel Hackett's there with uh with his twenty three points, but Roddy. Roddy has 12. He's been knocking it down from three as he does so well. And he also has three assists and four boards to go along with it. So, you know, both of these guys are definitely letting their impact be felt. And, uh, man, I think the uh, last couple of possessions, man, Ephesus has stepped up their defense. They, they've got some good contests on these, on these jump shots. Um, I, I can sure. see a, a sense of urgency there. And, uh, man, me just got to take care of that rock. Yeah. But uh seven point game, man. They uh that just sucks. When you they get like two top, two or three stops here. in a row and then you turn it over. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, yo, man, we're getting stops in a row, but we're not converting, man. It's uh it's just like you definitely don't want to get a stop and then there it goes. Ooh. Yep. Oh. Eight seconds, eight seconds left. See, that's a big stop, though. That's it. That's a big now. possession. That is. It is. It is, man. I think uh, that. Uh, I mean, even if they even if they here. don't. Yeah, even if they don't, you know, even if they don't score, I think it's positive to see. Like, okay, we've got multiple stops Absolutely. in a row. You know, what I mean, heading into this fourth quarter, let's take a little breather, get our legs back, and uh, you know, um, go from there. Yeah. Oh, I missed it. Let's see what he's gonna get up. Okay. And that is the end of the third quarter. We got a score of 64 to 57. Seska Moscow is up against Anadolu Ephes. And uh, so we have an announcement. Are you a Euroleague fan aged 18 to 25? Would you like to win two free tickets to a regular season Euroleague game? We have a free pass for Euroleague TV for the rest of the season and the access to the final to the final four pre-sale and the opportunity to win tickets and merchandise. EuroLeague Basketball launched the, announced the launch of the EuroLeague Fan 7 Lab, a new initiative to work with select Generation Z fans to effectively identify the latest trends and drive engagement with the fans of the future. They're looking for 121 participants between the ages of 18 and 25 years old from 11 cities in eight different countries. They will participate from February to May in a series of creativity and ideation workshops and digital sessions conducted throughout innovation, innovative research methods. You can apply at fanzlab.euroleague.net. Again, that is fanzlab.euroleague.net if you want to apply. So. Oh, that's really cool, man, that, uh, that EuroLeague's getting involved with that. EuroLeague has, you know, EuroLeague quietly has, like, a lot of uh, different initiatives outside of basketball that are uh, that are really cool. I think there's there's one, um, like, a sports management program or something that I saw that, they, uh, that they're a part of. And, um, you know, and I know they, they do a lot of different events outside of basketball that, uh, that are pretty cool, man. So it's, uh, it's, it's yeah, dope that's that they're awesome. doing that for Maybe- the year. Yeah, done a great job of doing that, you know, throughout the years, just kind of expanding the brand. And like you said, you know, it is it's always much more than basketball. And they've done a good job of, of expanding mm-hmm. that and doing things, you know, outside of the court and getting the players involved, too, you know, as much as they can. Wow. I mean, right now it's tough with COVID, but getting getting the players involved because, I mean, it's, it's popular, man. EuroLeague is popular. Guys, even here in America, love watching these games. I know people follow these games here here in the USA. So it's, it's, it's cool that they're doing that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, man. So, you know, I think, uh, I think, uh, you know, your league's definitely moving in the right direction and, uh, you know, it'll be exciting to see, you know, what other initiatives they have 
coming in the future. But here we are in the fourth quarter, and Michic a big shot stepping up, sixty-four to sixty. We got a four-point game, ladies and gentlemen. Man, FS is known for these fourth-quarter comebacks. Um, you know, you, you <laughs> don't want to be known as that team. Like you'd rather be in the lead and not having to come back. But I mean, this has kind of been their mo for a little bit. But uh, so let's not sure. let's not uh let's not be surprised, man. If they uh, if they start to uh, sneak wow. it out, man. <laughs> there they go. There they go. Dunst them with the dunk. We got a two point game, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so look. Here comes the discount because I'm such a sweetheart, and I'm gonna extend it to you, John, and everybody back home. Do you do you want to change your prediction that you gave me? That you gave me your word at the beginning of the show. Do you want to change it? I'm gonna give you the chance right now. So it's close. No, nope, I'm gonna stick with it. I'm sticking with the my bandwagon. <laughs> I'm okay, you're with man my of your pick. word. I can respect that. I can respect that. I'm not gonna jump ship. I'm sticking with it. And just like that, and here F we go back in and the just league. Just like that, sixty-four, sixty. With it. <laughs> Yo, a this is shot. a shootout, I mean, man. This is crazy. This is crazy, wow. man. They were just down seven, and now they up. <laughs> and now they're up one. I man. mean, they, they they could fill it up in a heartbeat. They only scored thirteen points in the third quarter, and they've got what eight already. In the eight. first however many they got minutes. Eight right now. <laughs> yeah. They Look got at that. Eight. Just like wow. that, man. And that's Basketball three, is a game three of straight possessions. And quiet as it's kept. Game of runs. Let's not – I mean, that's, that has to be their fourth or fifth stop in a row, you know, yeah. defensively. So, For sure. For you know, sure. they're, uh, they're, they're definitely uh, turning it on. And um, let's see what we got uh, – Spiros Cole says, hey, Anthony, how are you doing? How you doing, Spiros? And we got another comment from Mike Stanton. Big Mike says, uh, Larkin and Michich are the best backcourt in the league. Are they the best backcourt in the league? Larkin and Michich. What do you think, John? I think it's hard, hard to argue that. I mean, you've mm -hmm. got the defending EuroLeague champion. One is a defending MVP, reigning MVP, excuse me. Um, I mean, yeah, it's hard to argue that. I think, uh, you know, you can look over with, with Barcelona, with Calathis and Higgins. That's a, that's a tough one as well. Um, those two guys, I mean, Calathis, I mean, <laughs> with how, how he runs a team from a point guard standpoint is, is there's not many guys like him, but, uh, right. but yeah, I think, I think it's hard to argue that. You know they're not the best backcourt, Mitchich and Larkin. It's it's tough to tough to beat that. Yeah, for sure, man. They uh, man, and I think I think I think Ephes, man, they might have like, in regards to depth as well, they might have one of the you know, the best backcourts, you know, as a for team. Sure. You know, I mean, you got Roddy back there. You got Elijah Bryant. <laughs> you know what I mean? They got yeah. They got some guys, man, that can hoop, man. So yeah, nah. nah People think, forget man, Elijah's with them. Yeah, for sure, man, for sure. But we got a we got a replay clip of that uh, Malutinov block from the third quarter that we're gonna, gonna pushes check it out. back out to Larkin. Larkin blowing by Sved, slapped away by Nikola Milutinov. It sucks rejection. when you got a step. Block of the night, and we've got a when you got a step on a guy, <laughs> just didn't get his positioning <laughs> correct. Glass how about this for help from the Nikola Militino <laughs> patrolling oh the paint magnificently gosh. to take away <laughs> that layup attempt? Flies down on the perimeter. <laughs> nah, that's a smart man. Smart man, man. man. If you're not gonna be out there playing above the rim, it's a uh, it's tough, man. That's a good drive by Will. Yeah. Will to Great turn the fortunes Francesca around right now. Francesca right back up, 69-65. Seven minutes to go. It's a veteran team, man. It's, you uh, knew they were going to respond. Wow. For sure. That's a tough bucket. Yo. <laughs> Yo, Michi just turning up like – Late. He's so good. He I remember tough. playing against him when he was in Red Star. It was when I was in Ephesus playing mm -hmm. against him. He was a young guy in Red Star. 
Yeah, man, he's he's good definitely game, man. developed over the years. No, they going sure. back. They going For back sure. and forth now. They going back I mean, and forth. A, to see how much had a, uh, had a great year in Tofus in Turkey. It's a tough finish. Yeah, me just. Had, yeah, he's got a he's got eleven. He's got eleven right now. Um, Larkin has twenty four, and Roddy Bubois sitting at twelve. But um, yeah, man, they uh they starting to fill it up. We got seventy one sixty eight here. Six minutes and forty seconds left. Shane Larkin with the ball. They they staying with that switch. They Seska's. Oh yeah. Ooh. They staying with that switch, Mormon. Big shot. Can't leave him. Open. How about his game winner? When was that? He had a game winner. I uh, know that was that was two weeks ago. That was two weeks ago. He had that, that game nice. winner. That big shot. Good pass. Yeah, it was man. I'm loving the ball movement here with both teams. Yeah. Loving the ball movement with both teams. We got a tie game, 71 71. So I think uh I think it's safe to say Shane's probably gonna finish out this game, especially Sesame's gonna keep switching like that. I don't think Shane's gonna get a breather in this one, man. He's gonna he's gonna have to ride it out. Absolutely. But I think he's one absolutely he's one guard. He's gonna get by Malutinov probably every time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because he's going to have to play too close. Him. He's going to have to play too close. Yeah. Which, again, it's, it's, it's crazy. Like, what you just said, it's, it's it's you know, crazy that the the confidence and credit to them for Seska, they're, they're going to it, and they trust their guys to be where they need to be off the mm -hmm. ball and make it difficult. Right. And that's what, you know, even in that last possession, I mean, Shane had him beat, but Will – Dug down, he was able yep. to get the deflection on uh on the on the on the dump off past the Dunstan. You know, it ended up being a tray ball on the other end, but you know, I, I think they're rotating well and they left Mowerman open again, which you can't do. And uh yeah, we're just gonna go back and forth the ball. here, man. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. How about wow, if you're Malukov fact. though? Last possession you had to guard Larkin on the perimeter, then the next one you gotta guard Mitchich on the perimeter. Tough. But but one thing one thing I really like about that last play there is you know he's sliding with he's sliding with Michich. Michich dumps it off. He was right there. You know what I'm saying? Like right a lot of bigs, big like they're not they're not really reacting that quick. You know what I mean? He was right back to the big guy, ready to make the next play, and then that's when he kicked it out to yeah. Mormon. But I think that effort yeah. is why Seska trusts their bigs to switch on the guards. Sure. You know what I mean? Because they're gonna make that yeah. second effort play, you know. Yeah. And again, I think it, that the chemistry, like they've, these guys have been here before they played together. So they like the guard knows when I step up, he's like, I know Malutinov's going to get back to his guy. There's no right. like, well, if I step right. up, I'm going to give up a dunk. It's kind of one of those. That's why these mm -hmm. teams are, you know, especially Seska, they're so good defensively is because they have that trust and, and they know that I can trust the guy behind me to do what he's supposed to do. If I help, I know someone's going to rotate, like you said, like someone's going to wow. make the extra effort to get back to my guy. And the, the great wow. defensive teams do that. You know, the teams that struggle, it's, sure. it's tough. And when you have new guys and guys that you haven't played with, it's, it's tough to – and it takes time to gain that trust. Yeah, no, nah, it definitely does. Back it it back definitely back does. Line. But, you know, once you have that trust and everybody's moving on that same – uh, on that same accord, man, it's uh, it is beautiful basketball, man, and uh, they just needed that one more rotation. But you know, you don't have to give something up. You don't have to give something absolutely. Up. Have you had any overtime games doing this yet? Yeah, we have. We I think we've had one. I think we've had one. I can't remember which one, but we we've had an overtime game. We've had a lot of close games though. And I'm talking about we've had games where it's been like a large lead and then somebody comes storming back. Like we've had some really good lead, some games here on the uh, on the watch along. But um, yeah, thankfully, I mean, and obviously we always try to get the game of the week, but we haven't had uh, too many blowouts here. Uh, yeah, it's been a, it's been a lot of competitive games. I'm losing really cool. right there. That is great defense. Underrated, man. Yeah. Un Underrated defender, man. You got a big that can sit down with guards and keep it interesting. You know, you, you got something special there. Absolutely. Can't hack it. Uh, 
this is man picking up a little bit under five minutes under five minutes man got a one point lead i'm still sticking with my pick i'm still sticking with my pick good i'm glad to hear man i don't want to be left alone here man i i I picked Ephesus. So I didn't want to be left alone here, but you know, I, I just felt the need because you're a guest and you got to take care of your guests. Hey, you know I, what I mean, I, I felt the need to it, offer man. you a little bail. <laughs> I appreciate that. That's a tough. Yo, finish. Will's so tough on the block. <laughs> that is Will's a tough nice, finish. dude. Man, he's so smooth, man. He can hurt you in so many ways. Here. Yeah. Man, I wonder. I wonder how much Seska's bigs practice like one on one in practice. You know what I mean? Sitting down. Yeah. Like when you watch these bigs, when you watch these bigs sw- switch out, they don't look lost. They look like, all right, like I've done this like they're plenty ready, of times yeah. over and over and over again. They're ready. Like they're sitting down, their arms are out, they're ready to react. It's almost like For I feel sure. like they. They rep this. They rep this and practice a lot. It's Man. not just in games. You it, know? It's funny when you play against the guys like like Kyle Hines and you know he switches out on you. You're like, yeah, we're gonna throw it inside. I'm not even. Yeah, I'm not icing him today. Nope. Not like you, right. Othello Hunter. Like, yeah, we're not. We're not gonna ISO that one today. We're just gonna. We're gonna swing it. Maybe another team we might right. ISO, but no, not against these guys. <laughs> Certain guys, you just Kyle. you just can't do it, man. Can't I used to uh, I used like, to play with uh I used to play with Brian Randall and uh you know he was another one of those guys where it's like you know guards would start waving people off and try to walk them down we'd be like go ahead <laughs> go ahead and try it if luck. you want to yeah, yeah you're not the one <laughs> you better off going against me <laughs> you know, but, oh man yeah, this man. is coming up on we four minutes one point games. Four minutes, 77-76. Seska Moscow is up against Anadolu Efes right now. Efes has the ball. Let's uh, see how this one's going to come down to the end, man. What we haven't had, we haven't had a game winner yet on the watch along. So that would be pretty cool if we had a game winner today. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. I would not be mad. I would not be mad. And it, I, I, it looks like they setting the table up for a game winner here. We got three minutes and 30 <laughs> seconds left. Looking like it. They setting the table up, man. They setting the table up. Moorman hit, the, hit the last game winner who, for Athens. Yeah, that was crazy. That was crazy. It'll be interesting to see if it does continue to stay close who each team is going to go to at the end. Because you got plenty of oh, options. Down the stretch, for right? Game. You got for plenty sure. of options. Down the stretch. You know, you got so many guys that are playing well. Man, Dunstan with a huge block. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, man. Wow. Great pass. How about that? How about that pass? Bucket. My goodness. Great pass. That is an unbelievable pass. He's such a smart player, pass. dude. Like, I yeah. mean, just to make that, man, just to have the awareness. That's a- of like, all right, I'm running to the rim. I'm gonna catch this thing with one hand and fire, fire it out to the shooting to my, pocket <laughs> to my shooter I mean? in the corner. Yeah, right on, right on target too. Right in the pocket. That's crazy. That's that was a yeah, fantastic. That's pass. crazy, man. Big time shot too. Right there, man. Catchable ball. Yeah. Man, it, it doesn't get man, any prettier than good that, one. man. That might that might be no, the, it doesn't. Was the Euroleague magic moment? It that's should my, be. That's my candidate. Yeah, that's my candidate for the uh, Euroleague magic moment. If uh, if Euroleague's uh, listening at the moment, <laughs> but, yeah, no, that was a heck of a play. Oh wow, D Hackins, mm-hmm. <laughs> D Hackins in his bag. Sheesh, that is a tough shot. That is a tough shot. You know, that's one of those. That's a confidence shot. Like, you know what? I'm feeling good today. Absolutely. <laughs> You're not here. You're not Absolutely. here. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, wow. Look, Shane, Shane's going to get by him go, every Dunstan? time. Here we go. Got, got fresh legs. Got those young go, legs Dunstan? out there. Climbing the ladder. This is crazy. It's a great game. 79 81. 
Yeah, it is. They're going back and forth. Somebody's open. They caught a foul on the, on the body there. We got a we got a 79-81 game. Two minutes and 14 seconds left. I see some of you, somebody asking in the comments. We got a very exciting game. If you want to watch this game, head over to Euroleague.tv, like right now, and then uh, type in Watch Along 10. You get 10% off. Um, that excludes those of you that live in Italy and Spain. But if you head over right now and sign up, you can catch the end of this game because I got the feeling a game winner is gonna is gonna happen tonight. I hope so. Today's gonna I be a game so. winner day. I hope so too. Today's the day. This is gonna be a game winner night. So please go sign up and watch the stream. Good pass. Good pass. Good bucket. Great basketball We're right going there. Back and Great forth. basketball. Will Clyburn with the three ball, 82-81. Seska's up. We under two minutes. Under two minutes. Let's see what they – okay, we took a foul here. Got a minute and 49 seconds left. Man, Seska uh, – F has got to go back to that switch. Got to. The Malutinov still back in that game. You got to have Shane – Run by him, and then you know yeah. who knows. Malutinov might he might he's gotten beat a couple times. He might play back if yeah. they get that switch again. He might play back. It's just a I mean, natural you instinct. You got to keep going to it. Yeah, they switch it early. Let's see what they uh, see what they run here. Look like they got a stack set for uh, they got a diamond set for Roddy. I remember that yeah, play. Seska's just going to switch everything. Yep. Seska just going to switch everything, just let you beat him one-on-one -on -one at this point. And Misha's like, man, who said I can't go left? Who said I can't go left? <laughs> he was foul. listening, man. He was listening to you. <laughs> yeah, he was. He was. He was, man. He knows he's got to report. He one text and told man, Anthony, Anthony said you uh you can't go left. So he's like, okay, I'll do it. I'll do it under two minutes. <laughs> yeah, he checked that at halftime. He watched the watch just, along at halftime. him. You know, on, on speed. <laughs> <laughs> Skip like, through it. do it just for him in crunch time. No, this is, man, this is a big time take. Good hard man. foul, too. No easy nah, basket. Sure. No, you can't. Not at, not at this point in the game. Not at this point in the game, but – Okay, so we got a tie game here. 138. If he hits this, Ephesus is up one. What are you running if you're Suska right now? Heading back down on the other end. I, I mean, I would go back with the pick and roll with Hackett and Malutinov just because it's it's worked so well right now. Mm -hmm. That or try and get Clyborn right. in a in a post or an ISO situation. Yeah. Maybe yeah. I mean just create a switch if you can or but it's yeah. I mean, it's just crazy with how these teams have been playing because, I mean, you look at these two teams and they've just made the right reads. A lot of teams don't yeah. do that. Oh. That's a fact. You know, like we just a lot missed of the, the good basketball play. Yeah, it just missed. It was a good drive. Yeah, it was. Here we go. Okay, Ephes, see what you got going. Look like Shane don't know what they're running. Ah, uh, uh, he, he missed the layup. Now they out running. Seska pushing. Shved. There's okay, just so many back. options for both teams. Nah, it is. Shved over here making plays, finding Clyburn in the corner. Just missed it. Okay, hey, I'm telling you, game winner. <laughs> this is the game. 82, 83, 40 seconds left. 40 seconds left. He going to call that? Here we go. No, he's not calling time. For the ice Shane spacing him out. Oh, Shane versus ISO. shit. It's bad. It's yeah. a great pass. Good pass. Good pass. Got a foul. That's a good pass. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, it's like, it what are you great doing? cut, too. Great cut. Yeah, no, for sure. A lot of guys. You know the whole world was watching Shane. I know I would have. <laughs> you know. I was you're not, not trying to, to make, make it, uh, the game ceiling dunk. You, you weren't cutting nope. for the game ceiling dunk. <laughs> if I was cutting, I just would have went from one corner to the other. One corner <laughs> to the other. I wouldn't have stopped in the paint. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, man, we got some uh, we got some comments here from uh, oh. Kyra. We got an Ephes fan and. Uh, 
got a Karshiaka fan as well in the comments. Oh, we got 20 seconds left. Moscow down two. Will Clyburn up top with it. That's a good oh. find. Oh, and one three ball. Whoa. Oh my that is an unbelievable and pass. One, three ball. That was a great pass, but the finish. Yo. Your your guy, Daniel Hackett, MVP. Daniel MVP Hackett. of the week. <laughs> great Yo, pass. Crazy. Like great pass. Because Will Clyburn great going pass. to his right, you you can't get much better than that. And that was just a yeah. fantastic find and the right call, because that was a foul. That was a foul. Wow. Yeah, no, nah, for sure. It was definitely a foul, man. Okay, let's let's reset the room. 13 seconds. Dang, I'm Hackett sticking to my pick. All right, all right. 85-84, D-Hackett at the now. line. Man, this is going to suck for Ephesus. They lose off of that. The A-1-3. I'm sticking oh. to my pick. Okay. Are you going for the are you gonna are you Time going out. for the win? What are we doing? Are we going, going for the win. win or the tie? I'm going for the win. I'm going for the win. I'm going I'm taking my win and I'm going home. I'm going Love for the it. win. Love win it. On the road, road, why not? Why not? What uh are you gonna if you're Tesco, Hey, you're if I got and if I got right? John Diebler in the corner, if I got John Diebler in the corner, I'm for sure going for the win. It's not it's not even a timeout. It's not even a timeout. <laughs> Go, go in the corner. I love it. I love it. Man, this is uh, – it'll be interesting. Is, is Seth going to take uh, Malutinov out? Or are they going to keep him in for defense? Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. Hey, go small with Kurbanov at the five. I going to say it right here. I've been saying it the last five minutes. Here comes the game winner. Everybody game back winner. home, leave who's your gonna, comments. Let me know it? who – yeah, let me know who's going to make the game winner in the comments, ladies and gentlemen, because there is going <laughs> to be a happening. game winner. It's happening. It's happening. 86-84, there will be a game winner here. And I'm just letting y'all know right now. Don't, don't say you didn't hear it here first. Who's going to make the game winner? <sighs> Roddy. Roddy. Roddy Bubois. Roddy going with the game winner. Yeah. It's a great game, man. It's a He's great game. Catch his, it is. It is. Roddy's going to hit the game winner. Okay. Who Dol- we got in? Who we got Dol- in? Dola says Ephesus is going to win. Burke says Larkin's going to hit the game winner. Okay. I like it. Diogo says Seska's going to win. All right. We're going to see, man. I got a game winner for no, Ephesus. No down. Mormon? Mormon hit the game winner two weeks ago. Is he going to hit a game winner again? He did. I don't think they're gonna help off he like could. that. I think. I think. Hold on, Roddy. I mean, you, yeah, you can't help, out, right? Okay. You can't help. Yeah, you gotta like. That's true. It's either you get a give up a layup. Everyone stay home. Give up a layup. Oh, they're switching. They're gonna switch. Go. There goes the switch. There goes the switch. Gave up the layup. Everybody stayed home. They gave up the layup. Okay, tie game. Eighty six, eighty six. Tie game. Yeah, they weren't losing. We got to over. We <laughs> they weren't taking the L at game. home. Overtime. I don't know. It's point eight. Uh, yeah, it's overtime, man. That's tough. That's tough. Dang, man. Still chance for the game winner, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not wrong yet. There is not chance. wrong yet. There is Still chance. chance. We got point eight seconds left. Yeah, there's point eight. It's a great game. Left. Could be like a could be a lob foul free throw. I would hate for the game to end like that, but <laughs> oh gosh. Because yeah. this has been an unbelievable <laughs> game, back and forth. These teams are good, man. These teams are these teams are good. It's been a great game. Yeah, for sure. For are you sure surprised they tough, kept losing all in? Yeah, especially at the end like that. You know, I wasn't. I don't. I don't know why they did that. You know, I would have. I would have put somebody a little more mobile out there. Um, Maybe Joel, but is he? But I mean, he, he has back a, he, in his finger. Yeah, bowling boy. Yeah, but I think, uh, you know, I think, you know, Manutinov was he was guarding pretty well, you know, especially. He's done well. Uh, yeah, no, he's, he's done well guarding the ball. Keeps going Outside of guarding Shane. He's going back to it. Yeah. Right. But no, he's he's done well. Outside he's had some really Shane. good possessions. If I'm yeah, him, I'm I, I think I think he tomorrow. was just 
Oh, for sure. I think he was just kind of <laughs> caught up in like not giving up the three that he just got yeah, a little which is smart. and gave up the two. Yeah, which, which is, is fine. Which is smart. Which is smart. Yeah. So. Here we go. So let's see. Let's see here. Let's see here. Who did the last two? Uh, Misha hit the last two pointer. Um, and we are tied at 86 right now. 0.8 seconds left. We're going Seska's inbounding the ball. It's going to be something up top, I'd imagine. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh. he had a great look. Cliver had a great wow. look. Wow. Wow. Gosh, that was perfect. Wow. He was fading away a little bit, though. I'm surprised uh, they didn't switch that. Wow. Yeah. Overtime. Here we go. Yeah. Overtime. Overtime. Here we, here we go. We're here. We're here. Wow. Wow. He had a great look. That was, I'm surprised he that was, was that open. Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't switch it. Was, yeah, that was. I mean, they didn't switch man. the screens. There's point eight left. Man. Yeah, that's that's tough. Okay, so 86, 86, heading into overtime right now. If you're watching, I see a lot of fans are uh, are, are just joining us. Please stick with us. We got a very exciting game. Definitely a game you don't want to miss. It's been a shootout. We got a lot of. A lot of points being scored from uh, from both sides. Uh, I'll run down some of the stats for everybody. Uh, Daniel Hackett has 31 points. Man, he's on his way to another MVP. Man, he's uh, definitely he's playing out of his mind. With Flyburner has 17. Gregonis has a uh, has 14. Um, so they're definitely uh, playing well over there on Ephesus. We have Shane Larkin with 24, Rodrigo Dubois is 15, and Vasile Micic has 15 as well. And, and Brian Dunstan has uh, 12 points, hasn't missed a shot today. So, man, it's been a lot of uh, Still a potential for a game winner. Side. We still have potential for a game winner. Still potential for a game winner. I caught it early, you know what I mean? Um, so... Uh, I don't know what you guys are doing, but you definitely want to you definitely want to stick around and, and watch this game winner. I've seen this show before. I've seen this before, so I won't give any spoilers though. But I've seen this show before. And uh, if you guys head over to Euroleague.tv, you can sign up for to watch this game as well as the uh, forthcoming games. We have a promo code Watch Along Ten. That's Watch Along in the number ten, and you'll get ten percent off of Euroleague TV subscription. But it excludes those of you that live in Italy and Spain. But uh, please go ahead and uh, and check it out. But yeah, we got a we got a team lead graphic here. Let's see uh, let's see how both teams have been going up and down here, man. It's been a lot of lead changes, back and forth. Man, this this whole game's been back and forth, man. That's uh that's pretty cool to see, but. Here we go. Overtime. Let's jump it up. Let's jump it up and get we it going. We're right about one thing. We did say it was going to be a good game. So no matter what else happens, <laughs> That's Anthony, a fact. we were right about it being a good game. That is a fact. That is absolutely a fact. And, uh, you know, and everybody has showed up to play that you would expect. You know, yep. we've, had a, we've had a lot of big performances. That's a, that's a big offensive rebound. Oh. Got a good look. Got a good look. Yeah, man. Yo, so so what do you so what is your mindset heading into like an overtime like this? Like as both teams, you know what I mean? It's like you kind of want to play off your same rhythm and you know what I mean, because you know how end of the games get, you're just like, okay, let's just make sure we get a shot, take care of the ball. Yeah. When you got five minutes, yeah. you can kind of flow a little more, you know what I mean? For sure. So for sure. I think, yeah, I think you just kind of stick stick with what's been working. You know, like for Ephes, I wouldn't. I don't think there's a lot you really need to change. Um, I mean, you just got two pretty good looks from three. They've been shooting the ball fantastic from three tonight. So, I think mm -hmm. just kind of sticking to what you've been doing, and, and same for Seska. I mean, you've got guys that are that are playing well. You obviously want to put the ball in Daniel's hands and Will's hands, and kind of kind of let them make a play for you. But but with the five minutes, you know, you obviously have some more wiggle room and kind of 
gives you an opportunity. You don't have to slow it down or, you know, we got to try and get the best shot. Yeah, you know, yeah, you yeah. want to keep that flow, keep that rhythm because that's what's worked the whole game. Yeah, no, nah, that's a fact, man. And uh, yeah, I think, I think just keeping your rhythm is, is kind of the most important part, especially, you know, for, for both teams that were playing well towards the end of it. I mean, they were both going back and forth. So just kind of maintaining that yeah. rhythm is going to be tough to do, but um, you know, we got a, we got a question. Uh, Farzad says, who do you have in OT? I'm going with Ephes, man, since the beginning of the show, man. I'm Sticking riding, to the pick. My guys. Sticking to the pick. We're going Sticking with to the pick. Stick to the pick. That's what you got to do. can't change now. Roll them. Nah, nah, it's too late. It's too late. We got a one point game. Seska Moscow's up against Ephes, 88 87. We're under four minutes here. Um, man, I think they should. Wow. They got to get Sveta involved. Oh, that's a tough bucket. Big shot. Got to get Sveta involved a little bit. That is a big shot. 91 87. Y'all see Mitch's. <clears throat> Yeah, me just been trying to go to work the last few possessions. That's a good find. <laughs> That's Another a good big find. Shot. My goodness. Gosh. Roddy Dubois, Trey Ball, 91-90. We right there. Bubois got 18 points, man. He's playing well. Keep going back and forth. That's he does a good job shot. moving without the ball, man. That possession, just oh, relocating sure. and finding the open area. Yeah, finding that angle, man. You just got to get into co- to the corner of his eye. Yep. Oh, shame. We missed that. All right, Seska. Here we go. 91-90 still. Under three minutes left. That's a good find, man. Sved's so nice on that yep. pick and roll. You just got to give him so much attention. Yeah, he is. <laughs> you know what I mean? For Especially sure. when he comes off with speed. <laughs> when he comes off with speed, you got to give him so much attention, like, that big to. is almost always going to be open. Tough. Yeah, it's tough. Ooh, that was oh. almost tough. Oh, he got it back. Oh, he missed it. Ooh, he needed that ah. one, man. He needed that one. See, man, Sved got to stay in the corner on that one. Yeah. He kind of crept up, but they got the post up on the other end. Man, both teams Let are defending, play. man. They're coming over and rotating. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is intense. I love it. Man, we under two minutes. Oh. That's a good drive. And that's a foul. Shane yeah. will be shooting uh, two free throws. Yep. But uh, let's go to that replay of uh, Hackett's three-pointer at the end of the fourth. FS inbound to Mitzic. Seska playing straight up. Hackett defending his man at the half court. Nikola Militinov guarding him in three-point territory. Mitzic into the lane, finishes at the window. Nobody committed a foul, and we're going to overtime. Eight seconds of regulation. Well, you could see that. It's a high-scoring game. Well, I guess that was the – yeah, no, nah, it is definitely a, a high-scoring game. Let's see. Okay, 92-91. F is back on top. We got less than two minutes left. Less than two minutes left. Shane Let's has eight what, uh, assists. 26 and eight. 26, man, 26 and eight. 26 and eight. That's a nice line right there. That's a nice stat line. <laughs> Big three pointer. I forgot Toko's not even playing today. Yeah. Wow. We still have game winner Seska's. potential, so we're okay. We do. We do. 94 92. Seska's up. We got a minute and a half left. Shane's uh, creating up top uh, of Tibor. That's a good, that's a good look, man. That's a good. Have look. you had that's a double overtime Seska. game? No, no, we have not. We have not. We have not. Oh, he lost it. I'll find somebody. Oh, actually, playing it safe. Playing it safe. Ninety-four, ninety-four. Shane Larkin with the ball, going to get fed again. They send that double early. Space out. Great pass. Great pass. Roddy B. Roddy B with the tray ball, 94-97. 49 seconds left. 
That's a great Seven pass three. by Michi. Man, Roddy's got Roddy's got twenty one points. Seven threes, right? Yeah, it might all. Seven. It's all threes. Yeah, it's all threes. See, it's my type of game. Good job, Roddy. My type of game right there. All three. <laughs> Man, he's channeling that Deebler energy for Athens right now. <laughs> all three. I have Deebler hands today. <laughs> He's out there hitting. Oh man, I love it! I love it. three point. What's the game. most threes you hit in the game? What's the most threes you hit in the game for your career? And then let's say like in uh, in Euroleague. Career was ten in college. Okay, I was ten for twelve okay. one game, and then Euroleague. What is my Euroleague record? Seven, I think. I think seven. Okay, not one hundred percent sure, but okay. I think seven. So somewhere around there. Okay. Yeah. Around there. My man. I would try to be as efficient point, as I three could. Three-point shoot is huge. There's <laughs> nothing wrong with that. That's how you keep a job. That's how you keep a job. There's nothing exactly. wrong with that. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, what are you going sure. to right here, man? Been, uh... Man. Okay. Uh, I'm, run I'm running that pick and roll with Fed. You got to give them too much attention, you know what I mean? And I think yeah. that that's kind of, that's going to force the rotations that uh, that Seska needs to, you know, find that next open shot. So, yeah. you know, if uh, if Ephes is not going to switch, I'm definitely going with Spen, is going even small. if they are switching. They went. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no switch. No switch there. No switch there. Yeah, it's a tough bucket, man. A three pointer off the dribble off that pick and roll, man, is tough. You know what I mean? Why? They didn't need That's... to foul, though. No, nah, they didn't. Why they, they, they could have got a stop. Foul. I don't know why they fouled. Yeah. I don't know. It must have been Funny a brain time. slip. Yeah, they took a foul. They, they definitely didn't have to foul. So 38 39, Seska 90. Seska's down 94 97. Ephesus is at the free throw line right now. Hmm. Probably bet your life. Ooh. You missed that. I was about to say, you probably bet your life he ain't going to miss these. Yeah, but... Kuno doesn't usually miss those. <laughs> no, I know. Hey, That's his first, first miss of the season. season. That's his first miss of the season. First miss of the season. That's incredible. Man, okay. That, that makes it interesting. 94-97. Okay, he ain't missing two. All right, so we got a four-point game here. 38 seconds left. Get something going. He's trying to get down here. We're going this. Oh, big bucket. Big bucket. 97, 98. We got a one point game. Don't need to foul. Just get a stop. Seska just needs to get a stop. But Evans called a timeout or what's the deal? It's a clock. I think there was a shot clock. I think it was a shot clock issue. Shot clock issue. That is a big shot. That's, That's tough, shot. too. Yeah, it is. Wow. That is a big shot. Man, that's huge. Yeah, we had a clock okay. issue. One point game. All right, so need to stop. One point game. We're gonna have around twenty eight seconds left. F is with the ball. Hmm. Let's see who you guys think is gonna win. I see a whole lot of F is fans in here. F is definitely in the building. We got a lot of fans here. This this might be and this might be the most amount of fans I've seen watching the game. Man, the Deebler effect is. <laughs> It's definitely here, I think, here, it's, man. I think it's the game. We got, a lot we got of an overtime in. game, man. We got an overtime game. That's true. I'm just glad we got to have we an overtime game. Over. We got a perfect mix. We got a perfect mix of everything. You know what I mean? We got a perfect mix of everything. So this is uh, – Oh, man. This is really cool. And if you guys are – We uh, still have game winner potential. Okay. Game winner potential. We do have game winner potential. We do have game winner potential. We're going to see who has the heart to uh, – to hit this hit this game winner, but I'm trying to check on the scores for the rest of Euroleague. We got uh, an early lead, Alba Berlin versus Unix. Unix is out to a four nothing lead. They're just obviously very early into that game. So after this game is over and only after, you can head over and check that game out on Euroleague TV. But uh, can't leave now. Here we go. Can't leave now. Just need one stop. Come too far one to leave now. Don't need to foul. Come too far to leave now. Come too far exactly. to leave now. Whole lot of FS fans in the comments. A lot of turkey flags. Okay, I love it. I love it. I love it. Anybody going for Seska? 
Let me see if some Suska fans are in the building. Man, we got a okay, one point game. We're gonna inbound it. Okay. Look at Fat picking going up. Going to Roddy. Going to Roddy. Going to Roddy. Let's see what Roddy what Roddy gonna do with it. Okay. Oh. Oh. Ah. He missed it. <laughs> He was, <laughs> the Mormon tipped it right back oh, to him. <laughs> right back to him. Oh, I thought he was gonna make that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, Seska. Man, here we go. One point here we game. Go. Game winner. Game winner. Game winner. You gotta go All to right, Will. Eleven or seconds Daniel. left. You gotta go to Will or Daniel. Here I'm, we go. I'm going to Will because you gotta get downhill. I'm going to Will. If you're going yeah. downhill, I'm going to Will. I'm going downhill. If you're going to Will. But I'm going to let Will run up the left out? side, though. Yep, uh, I don't give him more space. Yeah, I'm going to let him run up the left side, let him come back to his right hand. And, uh, yep, here we go. 798. There you go. Let's oh. see what he got here. Good find. Oh, oh he missed it. I thought they were called charge on that. 1.4 seconds. I thought they were, they too. I promise you I thought they were going to call charge. Yeah, I thought they were gonna call charge. I want to see if he did take. Seska's down. It honestly was not. It was a charge. It was a charge. It was a charge. Shane got to be hot. That was, that was definitely a, a charge. He gave his body up on that one. It was. Wow. And you know what's funny is like, look. you know, Shane helped off the strong side corner, so you know it's just like it's one of those. You just gotta live with it. If that's not a year, that's moves, the one. If they don't call, yeah, they gotta call it. But man, <laughs> wow, wow, wow! Man. I thought that was the one. I so thought that was they, the game winner. Wow. So what are they I looking at? They're looking at the, the clock, clock here, or, or they're looking was, at the uh, foul? Yeah, yeah. That or yeah, if it was a sportsman foul, they're clear. Foul yeah. You. Oh, okay, okay. Wow. Right at the foul. Okay. Got a great look. Got a great look. He did. He did. Great you play. can't really great ask play. for much more than that. Nope. Yeah. I mean, but any 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 time you can get back on the clock is key. You know, if you can even get yeah. point four, point five, whatever you can get back on the Absolutely. clock is key. So it's at one point four. If it can go to two seconds, that's huge. Uh, you know I mean? Oh, they call us sportsman. Like, okay, fair enough. Fair enough. So that means uh there's gonna be one shot in the ball. One shot in the ball for Ephes. You get the ball back. Yeah. Okay, so Ephes is uh, yeah. So Ephes is up one. So potentially he makes this. They're up two. You're gonna have to foul again with what? Two seconds left. One point four. Yeah, this one might yeah. be over. This one oh. might be over. It might be curtain. Oh, he missed it. Okay, he missed the free he throw. Another free throw. Oh, for the foul. Or I think they're going two they going two free throws for the unsportsmanlike. Yes, he missed both of them. Missed both. Okay, missed so, both of them. How much time is on the clock? I don't they, see the time on there. I think it was. Another I think it was two point one. I think it was two point one when they showed, but I could be wrong. So you got to foul quick. Yeah, I know on the clock. Know. It was 1.4 when they were when they were discussing, and then I don't know if, uh, when the officials were reviewing. I don't know if they were talking about the time, but uh, man, I wish you could see all these Turkish flags are that are in the comments right now. <laughs> they, uh, FS fans are definitely in the building. Cosmo and Nicola says, "Seska, please." We did, we did, man, we did. So let's see. Uh, let's hope nothing crazy happens here. You just go in, get fouled, make you two free throws, and then it should be over after that. One would hope. What a game. One would have. Yeah, man. If I because I mean at 1.4 seconds, if you take the foul, yeah, it's pretty much over. Yeah. So by the time the foul is gonna be under, but then if you have the timeout, I don't know. We'll see yeah, how it plays. I'm trying out. to figure out if they have any timeouts or not. I think so too. Yeah, I know. Cause Seska, the, they just ran the last time. I thought they would have called a timeout. They just, yeah, they just ran it down. So got a wide open look. Or maybe they were saving it. 
No, they did. They did. Man. That would have that would have sucked though, like, you know, having uh if they would have gave up that three, man, you know, and Shane took because the Because honestly, that was like it was a smart play by Shane. Like it was it was a it very smart like play. A charge. It looked yeah. like it was a charge. So, you know, I don't know. That was a smart I mean, play. That's one of those where I, I was a gutsy play. It was definitely gutsy. We'll I don't think I I would have had the guts to do that, but that was a I mean, I would have stunned. Like I would have stunned it and got start. back. I would have stunned it and got back. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, oh, he's open. That's over. Wide open. Oh no, they got it. Point seven seconds left. Wide open. Roddy should have just threw the ball in the air. Yeah. Throw it in yeah, the air. Game's at over. that point, you just throw it. Yeah, just throw the ball in the air. The game's over. Yeah. So Roddy, he knocks these down. I mean, he might as well miss one. We were point seven seconds left. Yeah. Make the first, miss the second. Yeah, make the first, miss the second. I don't think nobody's going to turn and throw the ball down court in point seven seconds left. Yeah. Oh, he said make two. Yeah. They told him to make two? What a game. I thought that's what he said, but I don't know. No, no. Game's not over, ladies and gentlemen. Thomas 97 98. 0. 0.7 seconds left. Roddy Bubois at the free throw line. Let's see. Made the first. Let's see if he's going to make the second. I mean, if they don't have timeouts, you might as well make the second. Yeah. I mean, point seconds. Like, what's the, what's the, how many seconds does it take to, to get a shot off? Even if you like, you know? Missed it. He missed it. Game over. Anadolu Ephes escapes 99-97, but what a game it was. My goodness, a lot of fireworks, a lot of big plays from both sides. Daniel Hackett with 31 points. Marius Grigonis with 20. Uh, Will Clyburn with 19 for Seska. On Ephes' side, Shane Larkin had 26. Rodrigue Bubois had 22. See, like Meaches was 16. Man, it was a it was a heck of a game, man. Uh, you know, Hackett played an extremely an extremely uh, an extremely aggressive game, and he uh, he made some he made some plays for them. But uh, you know, they ended up coming up short. But you know, that 31 points was uh, was huge. But Shane, man, impressive, man, you know, having his uh, yeah. assists. You know, Shane with 26 yeah, and 8. He might, he might get MVP. He might get MVP this week. <laughs> nine assists, excuse me. And only one turnover, man. 26, yeah, one 26 turnover. 9, 5, and one turnover. There you go. Yeah, like that is a – that's a huge game, man. That's a huge game. Is he your uh, – he's your MVP for today? I think so. I mean, it would have been Hackett if, if they would have won. But, yeah, I think you got to go with – with uh with Shane just kind of how he played overall kind of really managed the game right. like you said having one turnover in in the amount of time that he had the ball I mean that's that's impressive he played great so it was uh yeah it was a good good game yeah for sure man but John I appreciate you uh spending some time with us here in the watch along had a great time man had a great time watching the game and uh man you know, you're welcome back anytime. Best of luck over there in Charlotte. And, uh, you know, if you ever want to come out of retirement, I'm sure one of these squads could use a shooter, man. They can use a shooter. <laughs> <laughs> Need about a month to get into shape. But, uh, but no, hey, man. You ain't I that far removed. I mean, <laughs> you're right. You're right. I'm still playing during the day. We still play during the day. But uh, I appreciate you having me, man. This was a lot of fun. Um, you know, this has been awesome. It's cool to watch watch these two teams play. And uh, thank you for having me on. This was this was great, and uh, looking forward to following these two teams and all the others throughout the season. I think uh, wouldn't be surprised to see these two there at the end. Yeah, for sure, will. But uh, everybody back home, please like and subscribe to the uh, Euroleague YouTube channel. Um, we had a great game. If you missed if you missed the show, you can watch this uh, this show here with John on demand on Euroleague's YouTube channel. You can watch this show as well as all the uh, the previous shows with all the amazing Euroleague guests. Stay tuned. We got a double header. We're right back at it tomorrow for the Red Star Monaco game with Marcus Williams. 
the point guard set like a Euro League record at that time when he had a he had a game with 17 assists or something crazy. But uh he'll be joining us tomorrow. So please come back with us tomorrow. Tap in and until then everybody stay safe and we're out.